guys welcome to the show um so this is titled uh petty teachers newbie how to make models part one although technically our newbie isn't a newbie today um let me introduce to you there where am i i oh, can't see there. myself how have you gone there right sod that i'm gonna move you ha ha so <laughs> natasha how are you so you aren't really technically a model virgin anymore, are you? No. Because you've been a bit naughty, but not a bit naughty. Hello. Show us the box first. You're all right. Be right back. Sorry, Penny. Right back. <laughs> yep, we can see you back. All right, let's put you on focus. I don't even know where I put the box. Oh, she's lost oh, the box. Now. She's lost the box. She's already, the box. she's already lost the box. Okay, yeah. show us your model then. So, Wait, what is you it? You want the box or the model? The, uh, have you got the box? Yeah. All right, show us the box. So, this was purchased a few weeks ago from Aldi. And yeah. it's the Hunting Percival Jet Provost T4 172 scale. Comes with paints and glue and a brush and ready. Get the drum roll going. <laughs> Let's see your finished model. Not hundred percent, by the way. Oh, don't, don't put yourself down. So I defy anyone to genuinely say that is a pile of poo. Taking into account it's a first effort. Yeah. Trying to get it in camera properly is really. I mean, hard. I'm going to be absolutely brutally honest with you. There are areas you can improve on, and you already know that. Yep. But I personally think you have produced a very good model there for your. For, well, no, you've produced a very fine model there. Done right. my best. If we didn't show the box up, we would be able to tell what what that is. Yeah. So there's a win there. So let's do a catch up on the chat. Right. So as usual, if anyone wants to join us, the link is pinned at the top of the screen. <coughs> there will be a very slight uh, vetting process. Obviously, if we don't know you, we might be a bit, we might let you on, but our finger might just be hovering over the, the uh, kick button. By the um, way, got to be, bit, be right back. <coughs> okay. Are you gone for a bit or? Three or four minutes. All right, no worries. Right, so you got a problem with me, I'm afraid. Uh, so, hello, Penny. Smith Speed says, hi, all. I lost the chat. Uh, Love Minnie says, hello, Love Minnie. How are you? She says, hello. Uh, Love Minnie says, Natasha. Uh, evening, Penny and Natasha and all in chat. Uh, Love Minnie says, fine kit. Hi, all. Wow, very good, Natasha. And that's come from MP Model Plastic, who is an extremely good modeler. And I think he's also not a liar. So if he says it's a good kit. Uh, Dave Mac builds. Did a great job there, Natasha. Uh, MP says, hi, Teresa. And I think that is the cat chat caught up. So the plan today, it was meant to be the first kit, but you know, Natasha got all excited. So we are going to be working on what is possibly a simpler kit. We're working on this today. So we will be taking it very, very slowly. We will be taking it from the angle of 
let's just say Natasha's never ever done a kit before. Um, so we will be taking it really, really slow. Um, so a lot of you experienced modelers might get a little bit bored with the progress. And I've just realized I need to hide that up, don't I? Um, I've been doing some filming yesterday on the Eddie Stobart, and that's a bit of a disaster. Um, so, right, MP says, very good choice, Penny. Uh, Teresa says, hi, Dave, Matt. Teresa says, hi, MP. Um, I'll be honest with you, um, uh, MP, I don't know. I've not even opened this. I've never, never opened this one before. Um, if we've done the Tiger one, I made about three or four of those. Um, I'm hoping that it's it's going to be as simple as the Tiger one. Um, but what I will be able to do is use that to sort of help and make very basic. Um, obviously, I've got critiques of Natasha. Um, and I say critique. I'm not into criticism. I'm into improvement. I'm the sort of person that would say, uh, I'm just trying to think of an example. If you didn't thin your paints, rather than saying, oh, that's a really crap paint job, I would be more inclined to say, well, if you thinned your paints, then you'd get a better finish. You'd improve on your finish. Um, that's how I am. Right. Dave McBill says, hi, Teresa and Mike. Jobberton Junction. Hey, Penny, I'm mobile, so in and out, have a good stream. We always have a good stream. We have two elements of a good stream. We have Natasha and we have a most wonderful audience. So I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be a good stream. Um, oh, God, Smith Speeds. Hi, Dave. Um, Dave Mac, loving your Stobart truck, Penny. You've done a great job. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Um, it's come together nice. Um, I made it, I did the like the next four episodes yesterday. I'm, I'm spoiling things now. Um, I've come across a problem. So let's change my view to, um, I'm still playing with different views. That's the one I'm after. So I've got the lights working. Um, the rear lights work um, and I've, I couldn't find the indicators. Um, so as you can see, the right indicators work. I've actually disconnected the left indicators because they were coming on all the time. Even with, even when the thing was switched off, um, let's see if I can find the other connector. Um, so But sometimes they were coming on on their own. Yeah, they're not now. So I don't know why that now works. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. So there's the left indicator. And now it's working fine. Um, I wonder if the indicators work with the switch off. Yeah, they do. But now, why is that bulb not coming on? That bulb is coming on. Um, so... Yeah, so it all works, um, but every time I fiddle with it, I seem to knock a little bit off, so um, I try not to play with it too much. Um, but you'll sit there, and then all of a sudden, the indicators will just come on on their own. Um, so I completely completely disconnected the left indicator, yeah. um, but the lights are working fine. Oh, and the brake lights work as well. I think the brake lights actually work. Do they work? Yeah. So like, there's the brake lights. Um, so that switch in the front is only really for the headlights. So, and I've I've kind of had a look at the trailer. Um, I think if anyone's a little bit clever, because I know that one of the complaints about the Eddie Stobart is that the trailer doesn't light up. Um, I think some of our more cleverer people uh, we'll be able to do something about that. Um, but what is amazing, and I've taken it through the other room, the trailer's about that long. Uh, it's huge. But um, I think we've got about eight to ten weeks now of um, supports and just building supports. We've got, the, we've got the back doors, which aren't attached yet, and we've got the front panel, which is attached. And then the next four issues that come, it's going to strengthen all of that. And once it's strengthened, it, it's it's the box theory. 
when you have one side of the box it's okay because it's just flat when you then build up a second side you've just got this wobbly bit that's ready to break off then you add a third side and it becomes a little bit stronger then you add the fourth side yeah fourth and fifth side it then becomes really strong once you put the lid on it it becomes really really strong um and the 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 front panel's only stuck on with four screws all in a row. So I've only got to get a cat jump up on the table and, and that's a goner. But once we get a second side on, um, I don't know, see, now Shadow's got a thing at the moment about investigating boxes. So I wonder if I, when I've made the trailer, if I had the back doors open, I wonder if he'll try and get in it. Um, um, anyway. So MP models, another challenge. Natasha is on the good way. Yeah. She's doing really well. Um, I think she is doing really well. Um, I don't think, hello, I saw you coming back. Um, so I don't think we can legitimately make any criticisms. Um, but what I have told Natasha is to keep hold of that model. Um, my personal opinion, yeah, I say keep hold of that. It is a good model. I wouldn't complain about it, but you will improve as you as you do more and more. And then once we get you to the point where we can teach you advanced techniques like weathering and pin washing, which I know is probably going straight over your head at the yep, moment. Yeah, that's gone right over my head. Yeah, because you don't even understand the terms undercarriage at the moment, do you? No. Nope. What did you call them earlier on? Wheels. <laughs> Wheels. Yeah, and then you were talking about <laughs> um, I taught her the the expression of tail sitter. Um, because you, you explain tell you tell them. I, I don't need to narrate everything for you. And um, then I, I carry on eating my pot noodle then. I'm sorry guys, I got hungry about ten minutes before the stream started. I got some advice. I can either put the well, I'm gonna call them wheels because that's what they are to my eyes. Or yeah. do that to it, put them things in. So because yeah. It could be one side heavy and it won't sit straight, whatever that's called. I think there is a little bit um, of skill in doing undercarriage anyway, because obviously yeah. you've got three points of contact with the ground and you want them to make contact correctly. If you've got one wheel slightly out, it's then going to sit at a funny angle. Yeah. But you probably made, well, it depends how much you like to challenge yourself. But mm. I think you may actually have, I think doing the undercarriage down might just be one challenge too much. Yeah, and thing. it looked really small. And I thought, with my, because I've got nerve disease, I've got really shaky hands anyway yeah. when I'm doing stuff. And I thought, I'm not going to get that straight. Right, we'll, we'll figure ways around that. Right. Should we do some actual work? Well, we can try. So I'm trying an experiment today. I've got two views on. Well, Just, I can't see the bottom for you. It says no, drag okay. to reorder. Right. So I have got two views. We do want to um, challenge. Uh, sorry, we do want to focus on Natasha because this is about Natasha. Um, so I might change my camera angles a bit. But I've got this view so that you can see what I'm doing. And then obviously in that camera there, that one. You can mm. see me from a distance. By all means, give me feedback, guys. If you want to see more of Natasha, you know, bigger Natasha. I mean, that might be a actually that'll be a better angle, won't it? Yeah. Um, right. And also, I'm I'm winding this back for me, um, so I'm kind of pretending. Um, I'm kind of pretending that there's a ghost me, but I'm I'm a new modeler as well. <laughs> That makes sense. That? <laughs> so basically i'm pretending to be a new modeler but right. at the same time there's the ghost of me whispering in my shoulder giving me advice if that makes any sense yeah uh, right so i think the first thing we want to do because i've changed the um the size of the windows i'm going to take the names off that will right. just make it a little bit clearer i think um, right, so well, 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 right. So good luck both. I don't think I need luck. I don't I think do. luck is no. 
Like crafting budgie mama. Okay, if you don't want to look at plain, put it away. And this time next year, you can bring it out and see how far you've come. There you go. It's actually going to sit next to me this plain. So you're going to sit and admire it, are you? No, right. I'm, I'm going to sit there thinking that's what I've done. Fair enough. And right, I, I have not got, I've not got sellotape. Um, but the first thing I'm, I was going to suggest, a lot of us don't like these side opening boxes. So what I was going to suggest, I saw this, what, I can't remember who it was, but there was, um, there was one guy, basically what he said is, if you put a piece of sellotape all around the side of the box, and then you get your craft knife, and you cut along there, along there, and along there, you've now got yourself a flip top box. Mm. Now, you, I've already told you that off stream, so I didn't get the reaction I got before. Do you want to fake the reaction? I can't remember what reaction I got. I think your reaction was, oh, that's a really good idea. That's the one, yeah. 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 So I am going to attempt to do that, but I think the box is going to collapse if yet yeah, will do. Um, so I'm going to attempt it with masking tape instead. It might not work. Um, but I have I'm done this. I'm going to do the sides, sod it. <laughs> you can do the sides if you want. But I'm I am a bit I am a bit of a fan of a, a top opening box. Now there are no there are no points um on this. Um you normally get like airfix club card club not club card, club points. So you buy models, you get one, two, three, or four points, and um, you 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 keep you you uh, collect the points. Then you once you get so many, you can go and buy. You can get a new kit. Yeah. Uh, right. So we've got DS models. Hi, Penny and Natasha. Hello. Uh, MP says a tip for Natasha: Every planes who have the system of the landing gear with tricycle needs ballast. Even the instructions sometimes don't advise you so this is what i mentioned to you off camera about what's called a tail sitter um, yeah. obviously that's not going to be appropriate with the firefly um but let's let's use this because that just happens to be handy now this will never be a tail sitter because well i say it never but it's meant to be um so you've got two wheels in the wings and then you've got yeah. one at the back so it's naturally going to sit like that but if it was something like a Jet Provost, let's say the front wheel is there. That's that's what they call tricycle wheel, uh, tricycle wheels. Yeah. So you want it to sit like that. But a bit of a physics lesson for you guys. So obviously, the center of gravity is like a seesaw. The easiest way I, I said to explain it is imagine this is a seesaw and Penny sitting on this end of the seesaw. So it's going to tip that way. Now, the two ways you can get that to balance is to remove Penny. You don't want to do that because if removing something on this model would involve cutting it there. right? Mm. Or you can add weight there. So that's a counterweight. So what you'd need to do is pack loads of weight into this nose. So then the nose is much heavier and it shifts the center of gravity that way. And you want the center of gravity to be over the two wheels. And that's what you need to do with the jet provost. Once we get to that point, I will explain all of that. But yeah, that's basically. Um, so every time you buy a kit, e sometimes the good kits will say add 25 grams of weight. Um, now, some models don't tell some kits don't tell you that. And some kit lie. Some kits might uh, say add in 25 grams of weight. and you actually need 50. Um, so what you need to do, you need to develop the eye for looking at the kit and mm. thinking, is it? Um, for example, when I did the F-14, a yeah. lot of people were telling me it generally doesn't need any weight in it. It's quite well balanced and most people don't need weight. So what I did, you got the little nose and I just put a little bit of, um, I forget what it's called, but... Um, it's basically it's little tiny lead balls. It's not lead balls. And I just put a load of weight in the nose. It's better to put because it's not going to overbalance. Anyway, look, so I've taped the side of my box up. So what I'm going to do is close to the end as I can. I'm going to cut a line down there. 
and then I'm going to do one on the other side and then I'm going to cut all the way along there all right I'm going the easy way <laughs> yeah just chuck it all out on the table so now I have a flip top box oh, which God, I personally I personally prefer. We have P40F20. Go easy on Natasha, won't you, P40? <laughs> so Dave Max says, Evening, Sir Dave. Hi, all. Natasha's bill looked a lot better than my attempts. Well done. So, Thank hi, you. all. Uh, hi, put P40, long time no see. Right. So, what have we got? So, according to the box, we are expecting one model kit that will look something like a Sherman Firefly. We're expecting three pots of paint, 159, 53, and 33. The numbers refer to the colours. Uh, a tube of glue and a paintbrush, which is generally a size two. Um, so, oh, you are now called not Chris, um, Natasha. Hi, not Chris. Oh, you have been, you have been knocked, Chris, haven't you? So the joke. <coughs> so I'm so I sorry. Thought Dave guys. Mack, isn't it? Yeah, da I thought Dave Mack was not Chris. So that comes from the old days of Chris Davis's stream. He used to stream with Chris Campling, mm. um, and then you had Dave Mack. So you had Chris, also Chris, and not Chris. Mm, <coughs> and I think. Well. I think I've been on before as also not Chris. Right, so generally I'll I'll, I'll do all of this because um, I know it's all the boring stuff. So we have the warnings. Oh, we usually get, this is what I like about the starter sets. You get this very small set of decals. Yeah, so I just noticed them. Get, I was like, bloody hell, they're smaller than the last lot. Oh, they're all right. They're okay. So you get some decals, but you're not overwhelmed with decals. So it's the small ones I worry about. No, don't worry about it. It's fine. So warning, not suitable for children under eight years old for use under adult supervision. Read the instructions before use, follow them and keep them for reference. So I'm going to play a little bit safe and I'm going to say, um, if you're under the age of 14, please consult adult um uh, adult assistance mm. um, so there's a little bit a little tiny bit of gum for about the actual model um and there's a few little specs so it had an incredibly high top speed of 25 miles an hour which i think is actually quite fast for a tank of world war two one two isn't it yeah. in a range of 120 so. miles a crew of four it's 25 and a half foot and it had, I don't understand what some of this means, actually. One times QF, 17-pounder uh, anti-tank gun, and one coaxial 0.3-inch machine gun. So pretty much basic coverage, I believe. Right. So assembly instructions, study drawings, and practice assembly before cementing parts. Now, practicing assembly is what I call dry fitting. So the three most important rules on making models is number one, always dry fit. Number two, always dry fit. Number three, always dry fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so P40 said liquid gravity. I knew it was called something like that. Um, but yeah, I did. Um, I did pop some in the F14. Probably didn't need it, but it didn't do any harm to put any in. So, yeah, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. Um, if it doesn't fit, you get it before it's too late and you get chances to, a, uh, to adjust it. Carefully scrape paint from cementing surfaces. So basically what that means is plastic sticks to plastic, uh, polystyrene. Not so much with these. This is, this is quite, quite good. But you, you want to avoid sticking paint to plastic because you're not getting the plastic bond. Do you understand how polystyrene cement works? Who, me? Yes. No. <laughs> right. So you get something like super glue, right? Yeah. You apply super glue along the edge, right? Mm -hmm. And then you stick the two parts together and they stick. 
Yeah. Basically, what super glue is doing is it's grabbing this piece on one side, it's grabbing this piece, it's holding it together. Right. A little bit like Spider Man um, grabbing two carriages of a train and he's pulling the two carriages together. Um, yeah. What polystyrene cement actually does is it actually melts the surface of the plastic on both sides. That melted bit then sort of melds together. And then when it dries, it actually it, it welds it together. Right. Got you. Right? So if you have a layer of paint, it's trying to melt the paint. So it's not doing it so it won't it won't stick so well so the right. way we get around that is if we pre if we paint parts before we glue them together any surfaces that are going to make contact we just scrape that paint away and that's just just that simple uh paint small parts before assembly to apply decals cut sheet as requested as required dip in warm water for a few seconds Slide off backing into position shown using conjunction with box artwork. So what they're basically saying there is have a look at the box. Right. Yeah, we can see where the decals are applied. That's usually pretty good on the back, but you can look at the front as well. Basically, mm -hmm. use any reference material you can. If you want to go on to online and Google Sherman Firefly or find that actual model, that's not cheating, is it? That's called research. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, using conjunction. Not appropriate for children under 36 months of age due to the <laughs> presence of small detachable parts. So as we get further into the into the instructions, you're allowed to get younger and younger. So yeah. up front, it says not suitable for children under eight, but now it's not suitable for children under three. So I reckon... I reckon on the back it'll say somewhere not not suitable for premature babies. Uh, <laughs> Speed says, so Penny, can I ask, would you recommend dry fitting? Yes, I think I might have just got the message across on that one. Uh, P40 says, Dave is not Chris. Um, so you use that type of glue to remove paint because the paint is a plastic. Yes, if you're using acrylic paint. Right, so each stage is we have a nice. Can I just steal the spotlight for a bit? Yeah. Right. So each we have everything is broken down, just like the segments of an orange, section by section. And in this particular one, you said about the Jet Provost having bits in red, and generally mm. with Airfix, different companies do their kits differently. Um, but Airfix generally, you build stage one, and then when you do stage two, the part that you built in the previous stage might be in red, and then it tells you the parts to add on to that. Um, in this particular one, what they're doing is they're highlighting where to go in blue. Now, is that understandable enough for you, Natasha? Yeah, I'm not going to go That's paint fine. in blue. That's fine. So you have these little symbols. So this symbol there means to apply glue. You've got this one, which is the same symbol with a line across it. it says do not glue. Um, then you have optional parts, which is a question mark. Being a starter kit, you're not going to get a lot of optionals, especially with the tank. Mm. Usually what optional parts means is um, do, the, do the undercarriage up or the undercarriage down. Um, sometimes you might have the wing flaps in a different position and they'll give you a completely different part. Um, they also say paint color. So if you need to paint something before you before you go to the next stage, they'll tell you to paint it. That's all right. That, that makes will, it easier. That will typically be, for example, the inside of the cockpit. You want to paint that because then you're going to glue it together. You can't get your paintbrush in. Uh, yeah. But... Having a quick skim through the instructions, it looks like it's all build, build, build until we get to about stage four. Um, so we're going to make up the main body of the tank. Right. So where's my paintbrush? Oh, surprise. I got a size two. Now, I apologize, guys. I'm a brush luck, a licker. Right. <laughs> when you get a brand new brush 
it's got this kind of factory gunk on it to keep the bristles nice i must confess i lick it um i'm sorry there is a breed of people called brush lickers and we have no problems licking brushes that have got acrylic paint i would never dream of licking a brush that's been used for like lacquer paints or something um but basically give your brush a little bit of a clean when you first get it just to get that factory gunk off um, you will also need some kind of vessel with water in it um, which i will sort out for me later on um, now obviously already i'm using kit that didn't come with the with the um with the model kit um they say you've got everything you need in the kit, but there's a couple of things I'm going to be using that I dis I disagree with. Cut and mat. I always believe you need a cut and mat because uh, you've made your jet provost, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, what's your cut and mat looking like? Uh, on a scale of one to ten, how much paint have you got on it? Uh, it's around there. Yeah. So there's a bit of paint on it. And where you've been cutting things, um, what would your table look like now? So for the uh, sake of crap. <laughs> yeah, so for the sake of a few quid, would you say it was worth getting the cut and that? Yeah. Right. Now, on the one hand, these paints are notoriously crap. Um, not all airfixers' fault because they package, they give you just enough paint to do the actual model and it will sit in a storeroom or it will sit on the on the container on the ship from china it'll sit in a warehouse and it'll get distributed then it'll sit on a shop warehouse by the, which time you buy it these paints may have dried up um, mm. but then on the other hand i've been told that they start to use their second generation paints basically oh your jet provost how many of your paints were usable uh all three all right okay oh, you were lucky three, i could use all three brilliant so we'll have a look at these paints now that one's usable but that needs a good old mix you yeah. see it's the separated um so that's absolutely fine um this second one which is 53 is it silver that's fine that looks a little bit solid it's not solid but it looks thick so that's going to need a little bit of thinning and this last one, 159, this is the important one because this is the body colour. That looks usable. A little bit of work required, but they'll be usable. This glue, most people don't like it. I'm not, it's not my favourite glue, um, but I will. I'll try and use it. And then we've got the parts, which look pretty good, actually. Um, for a starter kit you're kind of expecting something not too brilliant would you agree yeah um you know lack lack the details a bit you know lack lack extra parts not too many parts just something that a young kid can just bang together um mm -hmm. now obviously we're not experts on this so we don't know what we're looking for but what we can look for is just have a general look at the sprue make sure everything's connected properly see can we see any gaps everything seems to be connected um and then we can start oh we've got a spirit hi spirit we've just been invaded you're going to use that that i put the i put the, the towel just there for you special you and shadow um, so we're having a look. I mean, obviously, we can have a look at the detail. It actually looks very nice. What do you think, Natasha? Yeah, mine looks good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can see some ejector pin marks. If you if you get this one, Natasha. Which one? This one with the, with the turrety bit on it. I'm trying to use some. Um, the one, that, bit one. The one that's on your right. That one? Yeah. Now, if you get the turret like this, now flip it over right now you see on the square bits yeah you might need to change the angle and bounce the light but can you see some little circles on the surface yep they're called ejector pin marks now right, okay. what happens is you have a mold and the mold consists of two halves the molds come together 
plastic is squeezed in, then it cools down, and then there'll be little pins that you take you take one half of the eject. I'm very hard to do this with a kitten, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, see how she gets really cuddly and affectionate. Yeah. She just like it all day. I get shadow in the morning and her later on. Um yeah, so basically one half will come away and then you've got the mold still in. So you've got these little pins and it will just punch it out. And as a result, it does leave these little pin marks. Now, a good model will place the pin marks where you can't see them. So, for example, it looks like most of these are going on the inside of the model. So by the time you put the toe on, you'll never see them. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, Airfix are generally quite good. Oops. You know, I've seen ejector pin marks like in the middle of a fuselage or um, inside the fuselage. But on the mm. other side, there's a door that you've got the option to leave it open. And you're like, well, if I leave the door open, you can see this great big ejector pin mark. Um, right. So let's do a da, da, da. right. So. Uh, Dominic Koku, Goad a Vond Penny. I'm presuming that's Dutch. <laughs> right, so we've got good evening, Penny and Natasha. Uh, Horlicks, hey, good evening, Penny and Natasha. Now, Horlicks, Horlicks is another one of these people who have uh, made models, but before they made the model, they're like, well, I, I don't think I'll be very good. And then he does the model, and it turns out really, really nice. So um, he's a bit of a fibber as well. Oh, I can't make models. Ta -da! <laughs> so, uh, so we've got Richard Copleston. Hi, Penny. Great to see you again since the Rootmaster build. Yeah, that's been a long time, hasn't it? Uh, Facebook user says, Cat wants help. Wants to help Pen. I know. Uh, can that you... could be Rachel. Right. Okay. <laughs> Um, right, so where do we begin? Number one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, number one, that's a really good place to start. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the instructions oh, and we God. can see that we need pieces A3, A4 and A2. Now, with, um, with Airfix, the A means the sprue. And then huh? there's a number. So A2. So if you look right, so on this sprue, you'll see at the top it says ATML 00521 frame A. Yeah, right. found it. And on the other one, the one with the tracks at yeah. the top, it says ATML. Don't know what ATML means. Uh, 00521, which I assume is the kit number. No, it's not frame b now yeah. if you're like me and you're half blind this is what i like to do but i've got no pen this i have right so i will get two pieces of masking tape mm. somewhere in the corner i will just put that piece of masking tape or fold that over like that and then i will write with my pen A. Probably should have written on the masking tape before I applied it. <laughs> and preferably use a pen that works. Right, A. So now at a glance, I can see that's frame A. Yeah. And then with, I'll show you a little bit of an advanced trick. Right. So one, one piece across like that. Right, I will write B because this is sprue number B. Yeah. The reason I space it, my pen's not working. Right. So that when I've got my sprues piled up on each other, I yeah. can see both of the labels. Right. Now, obviously, there's only two sprues here, so it doesn't really make a lot of difference. But I've got a kit. Um, Oh, something snapped off there. So I've got damage already. Um, I've got a kit that's got something like 20-odd sprues. 
so That's you can see how labeling would be a lot a lot better um, yeah. What I'm going to snap that off. No, I'm not going to snap it off, but that's going to come off at some point. So, watch your toe on Sprue B. It's got a little sticky up bit there. Right, okay. It's actually got oh, bent I see bent it. Over. Yeah. How's yours? It's all, all right. All right. We'll try and keep it all right. I will. So, we've got A3, A2, and A4. And so they'll be on Sprue A. And then what you'll see is in the corners there, yep. you'll see a number. Yep. So A2 means piece number two on sprue A. So this is sprue A. There's piece number two. Now, there are two main ways to remove pieces from the sprue. Yep. The first one is with a knife. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to cut this off with a knife and the drawback with a knife is that you really don't want to go too close to the piece. So you'll see there that I've got, I call them sprue nubs. Yeah. So you see you've got that little bit of tab there. Yeah. So what you then need to do is then get your knife and just cut them a little bit shorter. Now, technically speaking, I should not be endorsing bringing the knife towards you because if you slip, you're going to stab yourself. You should be cutting away from yourself like this. Yep, should right. be. But I, I can't really control the knife so well when I'm cutting away. Right, and then what you want to do is just bring, cut that as close to the to the part as you can, and then an emery board will do. But some kind of sandpaper. We just want to finish off that and we just want to make that nice and smooth. Uh, I ain't got sandpaper. Well, if you have, I bought you a box with some stuff in. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, is I forgot it? About that. You know, it's only a few days after Christmas and she's forgotten what I bought her for Christmas. No, I mean, there's no sandpaper in there. That's great. I thought there was. Um, there is. Emery that. Ball. There you go. Yep. that do? That one's quite great aggressive, but I thought you had one of those little um those little makeup nail manicure ones. No. Oh, oh yeah, I have, sorry. Oh you have? What a coincidence. Oh well, look, they've been used as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. So with something a, a, a abrasive, just gonna file that nub down until it's flush. And then the best way to discard, don't look at it because your eyes will deceive you. Just run your finger along the edge. And that's the best way to tell if it's smooth or not. But also don't forget, what are the first three rules of model making? No, I do. You've forgotten already. Yeah. Dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. So oh, yeah. why do you think we dry fit? To make sure it fits right but obviously if i haven't quite standard that nub down enough it's going to create a little gap and then we'll yeah, see yeah. that that gap so i'll just finish off this third nub whoops that's another reason why you don't want to pull a knife towards you because if you do slip so that is basically what's called clean up We've cleaned up this piece, ready to stick together. So give us a shout when you finished your first piece. I don't know, what piece are you doing? Two. Number two, so you're doing the same as me. Yeah. Right. But I'm a little slower. It's okay, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. So once you've finished that, I will show you a second method of removing pieces, which is my preferred um preferred method uh, yeah. right can't help so dave mac bill says hi horlix horlix says hi dave hey dave mac uh it's rachel facebook user um horlix that's nice of you to say penny i'm pleased of mine but certainly no showpiece i love lighting them up with electrics yeah i'm sorry you know what i'm gonna say horlix um your your 3d printed samba van that was just absolutely hilarious um, I'm a little bit evil, Natasha. Yeah. 
if I think you're going to make a mistake and I think it's a learning experience, I will, just, leave me to it? I will just let you do it. And oh, then I, I think I'm being kind. It's, it's enabling you to learn. And mm. I said to Horlicks that he needs to get primer. Yeah. He was planning on painting it white and he bought black primer. Right. And, um, I let him do it. I probably possibly could have been a bit nicer and stopped him, but I don't know if I could have done, but he, right. he primed it very, very nicely primed. It really done a good job priming that. And yeah. then he applied white, white paint. Now white paint does not cover black very well. No. The second coat doesn't, cover black very well the third coat doesn't cover very well in fact the first 15 coats of white doesn't cover black very well yeah um there is a way to paint white over black and it involves using dark gray medium gray light gray that cuts about 10 coats out um but it was it was funny um i don't know how close to tears you were in horlicks but um but you know you learned from it Yes, you do. That's why I have three primers, white, grey, and black. Uh, so Horlix bought six of those models to try. Uh, great kits by what I've seen. Do you know what? I mean, ignore the ones that were half price in Lidl's and were only £3.50. Um, ignore the ones that are in Lidl's for eight quid. I think these retail for about 11 quid each. Yeah. I don't think you've got anything to grumble about for 12 quid. Well, I will let you into something. I've right. got a friend called Rachel. Mm -hmm. After I had, while I was doing this one, she said to me she would like to give one a go. <coughs> right. I mean, at the price we're paying for these, I mean, obviously Christmas is gone now, so you might have yeah. missed some of the sales. But when these were in, in Lidl's for £3.50 each, I mean, I was, I don't know, was I a bit mean by cleaning the shelves out? No, I don't, I don't think I was. Got it. Clean it. <laughs> well, when when I was when I was down there a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of months back, they had the kits in, mm. and they had loads of them on the shelf. Yeah. I'm guessing Barking isn't a model at modelling area. Right. Um, so when they came in, just before Christmas, I went in and I think I bought two or three of everything. Basically. Um, <laughs> So I've just seen a comment come in. I think there's going to be a bit of a theme happening today. Yeah, um, I think there is. I've seen it yeah. myself. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, sorry. Mike, I'm blaming you. You've just made me lose my stride. Um, <laughs> yeah. So buying two of every kit. I know, in fact, I think I bought three. Because I think I bought one of every kit to send to you for Christmas. Yes, so which got go. behind me. I spent a lot of money on you. I bought all your kits before the sale, not after the sale. Um, but yeah, I, wow. I wiped out about half of the shelf. I struggled <laughs> to get them all in one big carrier bag. And I left about half of the stock. And because I said to my friend, I said, I, said I, I am planning on buying them. I said, but I'm going to give everybody a chance. Bearing in mind, this is Thursday. And they said, oh, so when are you going back for the rest? I said, oh, Monday. I said, Friday, Saturday and Sunday should be enough chance for everyone to buy some. And then on Monday, they, they announced everything was half price. So I went out and cleared the shelves. <laughs> Completely wiped and dry. I even picked up a couple of quick build kits as well. Uh, right. So, hey, Horlicks, hope my phone stopped bothering you. Uh, so, Smith B. So, Penny, are you saying white does not cover black? No, I am not saying white does not cover black. What I'm saying is white is very bad at covering black. You can do it. Um, it's basically, it's like, it's like making frosted glass out of a plain piece of glass and a scouring pad. It's mm. going to take you a long time. Uh, Horlicks, hey love minis, that's okay I thought you were hacked, haha ha, the flipping VW, lol, yes I think about 20 coats and it's still grey, lesson learnt sort of, made a boo with my VW kit and primed the top grey 
Yeah, but grey is better than black, isn't it? No, you cannot have that, Spirit. I'm sorry. Um, my little assistant is not being very assistant -y. Um, no. Right. Uh, P40 F20, you, you need also to examine the part for defects. Yeah, I kind of touched on that also earlier when I said sort of have a little look. Um, obviously, I'm assuming if you're buying a starter kit, you don't know a lot about modeling, or you might just be buying. No, I don't know much at all. So, to be honest. if I said, tell me if you've got any defects, you wouldn't necessarily know, but I wouldn't have a clue. Most of these are connected by two or three posts. Obviously, larger parts are connected by more. Um, I've got one here, the gun barrel, and you've got a little tab there that's just floating in midair. Um, that, that's a bit of a flag for me, but upon closer inspection, I can see that's fine. It's probably just to sort of help the uh, plastic flow. But I can't see anything that is obviously bad. Um, but, you know, if you know, I mean, like, obviously, I've got that defect there, which that little tab bit there is just folded over and it's snapping off. Um, I'm really not going to worry about it if it does snap off. Um, so, yeah, to basically check for defects as much as you can. Um, if you're an expert on the Firefly, which I am not, you might then be sitting there going, well, there's there's not enough rivets there. And that bit that should be a bit more prominent, that raised detail should be actually a recessed detail. And that's not me. I don't know enough about it. Um, so Horlick says, and that's white too. Is that the, the roof? Uh, so Swiss B says, so can you clarify these kits you purchased on different <laughs> streams? You have had them from Aldi and on another Lidl. Is it Lidl or Aldi? I was running around like a blue ass fly trying to find them. Right. Oh. So it is both. Um, I think on this occasion, Aldi released some kits a week before Lidl's. But a week after Lidl's introduced them, they then they had a half price sale on. Oh, no. Oh, she's um, sorry. Spirit is you can't see her because she's off cam. Oh, she can see her. She likes yeah. to chase the cursor on on the key on the monitor. She was trying to chase after my hand the other day, weren't she? Yeah. She was looking at it. Yeah. Now she's found me pot noodle. <laughs> oh. Pot noodles and mini rolls. The food. The food of modelers. <laughs> um, All right, I got so snack yeah. next to me. Basically, just keep an eye out for things that do might do stuff cheap, like Lidl's. Yeah. Um, I've subscribed to Lidl, so every Wednesday I get a little notification saying, here, coming up in tomorrow's deals. And sometimes it might just be something boring, like sun lounges. I mean, what would we do with sun lounges in Scotland? Other times it's power tools or... Or whatever. Right, P40 F20 says, if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn anything. Probably the best piece of advice I've heard so far today. Um, Smith Speeds, and I have not had a drink yet. Yet. Mm. Right, so how are you getting on with that? Oh, Horlick says, I've got mine in Lidl. One. There we go, look. Got mine in Lidl's, planned on buying three at £7 each. When I got to Till, they were actually £3.49 each, so I got six kits. Yeah, nice. so when they came in, they were seven quid, and then the next week they had their half-price sale. Right, so that's piece number two cut out. Um, so I'm going to cut out piece number three next because that's the opposite side. And this is my preferred. Can you guys still see me? I can't see the monitor because there's a cat in the way. So... With a I pair of side, you, but I can't see. I have to look at the laptop. Yeah. Right. So with a pair of side cutters, the side cutters of your choice. These are pretty good side cutters. Um, but what I recommend, um, can I just steal the big screen? Do you mind? No, it make me see better. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play with my fancy camera and I'm gonna do a bit of a zoom zoom zoom. Oh, you know right. that one. So these side cutters you'll see that they have an angled side and they have yeah. a smooth side. 
right so what you want to do is take the smooth side and place them against the piece that you want to keep right and then just gently snip like that right now if these are awesome cutters like those god hands there's a company called god hands and you pay like 60 quid for them yeah. that's all you need to do if you've got a really cheap pair you will end up with a really big sprue nub there um, but as you can see these are somewhere in the middle and they leave just a tiny little mark so what we'll then do just like before we'll get our sandpaper and we'll just take that sprue nub down now one thing i mentioned before didn't mention before you see i've taken that nub down yeah all right and then i'm going to take the other one and you see i've i've sanded there and i've sanded there i'm just going to give that a quick rub along the surface just to sort of even it up and in fact it's not an awful idea to to you know to key up all all the surfaces but you've got to know which surfaces are going to be glued so if in doubt don't do it but definitely take that sprue nub off now i'm using quite a harsh aggressive um emery board here so it's leaving it a little bit rough and i'm not doing anything about it because i know that these surfaces are going to be glued uh, one thing that is um <laughs> um one thing that is uh good about airfix is their sprue nubs tend to be where you're not really going to see them and um, mm. they do they do think them out quite well um but if for example if i had a lump on this piece here sorry on this piece here this is outer surface so yeah. if i had to just take that down obviously the rougher the sandpaper the less sanding you've got to do to take it down but it's going to leave the surface very scratched. So then what you'll do is you'll go over it with uh, a higher grade sandpaper. So you'll see how I've got some little sticks. This is 180 grade. Now, the lower the number, the more aggressive it is. Right. So this will leave lines. Then you'll go in with, say, a 240 and then maybe a 400. And then this one here is an 800. And I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'm just going to sand a little bit of the actual sprue. I don't know if you can see that. It's dulled it, but it's very smooth. Mm. So that's quite a good finishing. Um, I mean, my there you go is another one here. This is 1200. So this is very, very smooth. So this will actually, I think this will put a little bit of a polish on it. There you go. So let's come the shiny come has come up again. So um, but obviously we're we're dealing with a starter set here, which is why I'm not really using them. Um, I'm just really want to take this down to a basic level. So yeah, so clean this one up. So um now that you've had a little go, do you have a preferred method? Um I'm I'm using the knife at the moment. So right, I'm you've probably got a little knife. bit more control with the knife. Yeah, because you can place the sprue down onto your cutting mat, and then yeah. up down. If I think the absolute worst that could happen there is you slip and your knife goes through the model. Mm. Whereas, um, you know, if I'm doing it like this, the worst that could happen is the knife can slip and it can go through me yeah um, but yeah you perhaps a little bit more control there um but i i do prefer um i do prefer to use my snips it is my preference it means i have to spend a little bit more money um but this is what's going to happen as you you know you've bought one kit for three pound fifty or seven pounds you've made the kit now you've decided do i like doing kits or do I not? If you do like doing them, then obviously, just like your diamond painting, you'll go out and you'll spend more money on it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, don't go out and buy thousands of pounds worth of equipment on your first model just to discover you don't like model making. Exactly. So, um, right. 
So how are you getting on with that second piece? Done it. Okay, done it. Right. So I would like you to now do piece number four. So we'll oh. cut that off and we'll do the cleanup for it. And we can do it however you want. I hope I've done a good job there teaching you and advising. And my advice is my advice is not brilliant, at least if it's not bad advice. Because this is the thing, a lot of what you do will be preference. Yeah. Um, you may not like how I do something. Um, I'll give you a really good example. I, what seems to be coming up on YouTube channels now is the debate about acrylic paints. Mm. But there was a couple of videos that I saw, which I actually totally agree with the person who made the video. And this right. person who made the video, for health reasons and the fact that he has pets, he yeah. only uses acrylic paints. Right. Yeah, I'd have asthma, so yeah. I think right. Um, acrylic paints are easier to clean up with, um, and lots of lots of few advantages for acrylics. There's some huge advantages for enamels and lacquer paints. And then you get these people who have a counter argument, but yeah. they state their argument as though it's a fact. You must use lacquer paints. Lacquer, you cannot get good results with acrylic paints. Fact, period, full stop. Um, yes. No, if you don't want to use acrylic paints, don't use acrylic paints. If you prefer to use acrylic paints, then use acrylic paints. Yes. You know, it's as simple as that. And it's the same with this. Don't let someone tell you you must use side cutters to cut your pieces off with. If you prefer to use a knife, then you use a knife. Yep. Um, do you have a pair of scissors? Doesn't matter if you don't. Yep. Okay, don't need it now. Right, okay. I'll move them over there so they're out of my way. Oh, so I'm just, I'm kind of thinking about the next stage. Right. Oh, God. So Horlix, I recommend you don't get the Cutty Sark. It's 1 to 775th scale, very tiny ship. Talking of tiny ships, I'll be back in a second. Um, I was planning on doing some builds over Christmas and releasing a video a day. Um, things kind of went a little bit wrong and I wasn't able to get things done. But I'm going to go and get you one that I did do. Hi, oh, Peter. Oh, nearly fell over. So, what I'm about to show you. Sorry, I don't know if you can even hear me. What I'm yes. about to show you is the Airfix Mary Rose starter set. Yeah. Um, I perhaps over weathered a, a little bit, but actually, I'm quite happy with the results. And I built this in an afternoon. Really? Yes. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should, and that's your target. But actually, I'm all right with that. The yeah. only thing that came up was the decal there split. So I did yeah. display it that way. Um, I didn't really like the flags. They were stickers rather than decals. Um, but yeah, I'm all right with that. I thought that was good fun to build. Um, and again, it was seven, seven or eight quid. Mm. And yeah, it was all right. Perhaps a little bit over weathered, but with a ship that old, is there such a thing as over weathered? No, I mean, um, if you get a ship like the Bismarck that was only did one voyage, that wouldn't be super, super weathered, would it? No, and you could you could completely rust it all up and say, yeah, it's been sitting at the bottom of the sea for the last twenty years. So, um, but yeah, I'm I'm all right with that. I like that. That is actually technically my very first ship. Nice. Never done a ship. Never finished a ship before. So, I mean, it wasn't a complicated build. Um, the mast didn't were difficult to get in, and I glued the sails on before I painted them. 
Um, so I couldn't get in there properly. I probably should have painted the sails then stuck them on. But yeah, I'm I'm actually really happy with that. And it was good fun to build. And um, but yeah, so I might release a video one day on it. But I'm trying to get you back to being big. Right. Uh, so where are we up to? Uh, Dave McBills, I'm going to have to say good night, ladies. Have a great build. You too, Dave. I know you are. Night, Dave. You have to go to bed early, don't you? Um, Horlick says, yeah, that's the one I did not fancy. No, that's actually the Mary Rose. Mary Rose? Yeah, Mary Rose. Um, but I've, yeah, Dave Mack bought the, um, I saw that on uh, YouTube and it had no scale. And I, I immediately looked it up on scale mates and I did a lot of research to find a scale and I thought, yeah, that is small. Um, but I don't know. I've heard good things about it. I've heard bad things. Uh, got the others they had though. Lord Peter Webster says, hi, Penny Tash. Uh, hi, Peter. Lord Peter Webster, hi, love. Hi, love. Hi, Mike, Teresa, Dave uh s mark p4020 f20 hi peter don't forget the like button i will do that now guys is it rude to like your own videos no i would <laughs> so horlick says wow that looks amazing uh love me says well all gotta go tend to things so yeah you too take care thanks for popping in uh swiss b says hi peter how are you lord peter says night love hi lord peter webster hi lord peter uh, Peter says, I'm great. Thank you, Mike. Hope you and all here are too. So I'm actually quite excited because I'm having my Christmas dinner tomorrow. Um, I had a bit of a bit of a stressful time over Christmas because um, I ordered my um, 23rd of December. Um, I got a notification from Amazon saying you can have a Morrison's delivery with time slots today. So I thought, oh, lovely, I'll order Christmas dinner on Morrison's. So I ordered all the vegetables, the potatoes, and a turkey crown. Had delivery set for between 7 and 9. I left a little note on it to say I finished work at uh, 7 o'clock, so I might not be home till about 8. If you come Ooh. before 8, just leave it on the doorstep. I'll be fine. Get to about 7 o'clock, finished work. Two items out of stock. And they weren't able to give a substitution. Would you like really? to which two items were out of stock? Oh, but it was the main ones. Yep. It was the, Always the, the, the way. The potatoes and the turkey. <laughs> Always the way. Yeah. So I'm frantically trying to cancel delivery, thinking, oh no, you know, there's no I can't have a plate of vegetables and I mean cranberry sauce. What are you gonna have that of cranberry sauce and carrots? Mm. Well, cranberry sauce and sprouts yeah they go well together so i come home and i said look i'm really sorry now v is a kosovan muslim he's oh yeah 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 Forgot he's, about a that. Fun, he's funny one because he doesn't eat pork not because he can't because he doesn't like it and uh, he doesn't eat halal meat well he does eat halal meat but he can't not eat non-halal meat um, right. So he can eat everything I eat, except he just doesn't like pork rather than can't eat pork. So he's never had a British Christmas dinner. Um, so I wanted to cook him a proper Christmas dinner. And I said to V, I said, I'm really sorry. I said, I think Christmas dinner is cancelled. I tried my best, honest. And he went, the most unexpected question, but obviously when you think about it, oh, well, when's Christmas Day? I went, the 25th of december and he went oh i thought it was the 30th of december so cut a long story short he had christmas day off and he had a friend who needed christmas day off and he's basically said okay well i'll work the 25th for you and you can work the 30th for me so i can have christmas dinner so he said, I th he said, I thought you said it was the 30th of January. And I yeah. went, no. And I said, but you saying that, you might have just saved Christmas. True. Because now I can have Christmas, you know. I, and so basically, I'm going to do my Christmas shopping dinner tomorrow. 
I've got the turkey. Well, I've got the turkey. Um, but I went down the shop that evening with my friend. Mm. She, she couldn't, she's got no car at the moment. So I took her down to Morrison's. I never seen so many turkeys in one supermarket. And as for potatoes, there were more spuds there than a farm. <laughs> <laughs> so I could actually have had Christmas dinner. Um, yeah. but I've, got, I've got this little box and it comes nice. with three meats, a piece of turkey, a piece of gammon and a piece of beef. Yeah. And it's supposed to serve four four people. Um, mm. Obviously, V can't eat pork, so he couldn't eat the gammon. So I had the piece of gammon boxing day. It was twenty. It was supposed to be twenty quid. They charged us fifteen. So yeah. I thought that'll do. Obviously, everything's more expensive at Christmas, but you could probably buy the same thing in June for about seven quid. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. So I got the meat. I just got to go and get the veggies tomorrow. Veggies. Right, how are you getting on with that piece number four? Um, fine, done it. You've done it. Right, so what we want to do now is you want, what do we want to do first, Natasha? Uh, check it fits dry. Right, it. dry fit. That one, yeah. Now, be careful on the instructions. Oh, Let's see, see if I can get a zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Right. Look at that perfect match. Right, let me just zoom out a bit because the, the closer you zoom, the harder it, fo it is to focus. So you'll see on one side, you've got two sticky out tabs. Yeah. And on the back, you've got two recesses. Yeah. Now, if you look at the instructions, you'll see that the two tabs at the front and the two recesses at the back. And then on each of these pieces, you can see you've got three little tabs there. They're going to fit into there. And then you've got a sticky out. I'm using really technical terms here. You've got sticky out bits at the back. And that is going to go on like that. Now, mine is an absolutely superb fit. Look at that. It's such a good fit. Look how good that is. I would say that's a good dry fit, wouldn't you? Mm. And then we'll dry fit the other side. It's probably going to fall off now. Oh, mine ain't. I worked it out. <laughs> Look at that. I've just left it there. <laughs> that is a really good. That is a really good dry fit. That's lovely. See, I I look at. So first of all, I used to think of Airfix as terrible kits. And I don't think many people would say I'm out of order in saying that. The old Airfix kits were terrible. The newer ones are much better. They do surprise me. So I keep getting out of shot. This is why I don't like the zooming right in. Right. So you're happy with your dry fit. So yeah. now you want to glue the pieces together. Okay. Now, it says on the instructions to apply the glue along there and inside those three tabs. You yeah. have a little look and you decide where you want to apply the glue. You might actually want to apply the glue along there and on the where? bottom of those tabs, or you might want to go with the instructions. God knows. Right. Now, I think I'll follow the instructions because I'm going to pretend to be a beginner. So, <laughs> right. So what we want to do now, get your scissors out. I would like you to cut out one section of the box. It can be a, a flap or something. Oh, this is why you asked me to. That's why I was How asking. How quick does it need to be? Now, I've asked if you've got scissors. Yeah. Now it turns out I don't. <laughs> I don't know where my the trouble is. There we go. When I tidy things, I move things around. Right. How big does the cut got to be? Just an inch, an inch thick, well, and then cut the whole length, perhaps. I'm just cutting what I've got here. Yeah. So it. cut a strip like this. No, I've done a square. Yeah. Right, so now cut another strip as well. So you want to mm -hmm. cut a little bit off, so you'll end up with one strip and one square. Right, now I'm confused. Right, so you've got your square. Yeah. And you want a strip. What you actually want is a little triangle. Oh, I'm not going to make a triangle like this. Right? 
This is going to be our glue applicator. Right. Right, and this is going to be our glue palette. So do I have to cut the square? Yeah, cut a square. So you could basically you want to, you want something to apply the glue onto. Yeah. So it doesn't doesn't go all over the place. Yeah, I've got the square. Now right. I'm confused after that. So cut a little strip of, of paper like this. A long mm. triangle. Okay. This is this is an official airfix tip, by the way. This came from Airfix. I didn't make this up myself. Oh, God, this is just starting to totally confuse me, isn't it? <sighs> Jesus Christ, you're building a World War II tank, and I've confused yeah. you by cutting two bits of cardboard. Yep. Right. Well, it's really so, confused. Cut a triangle and cut a long, thin triangle and cut a square. Look, there's the back of the boxes. Right? See, there that's it. That's, yeah, that's fine. That all now, right? Yes. Now, get your knife, right? Turn your knife upside down, right? Do so not the sharp cutting blade, the back of the blade, right? And run that down the middle of your triangle, right? So you're scoring a line rather than cutting. Oh, God. Just roughly. And then what you can do is you can then fold that piece of triangle. No, I'm struggling to do this one. Right, just score a line down the middle and then fold the triangle in half. By folding it in half, you're just going to make it a little bit stiffer. Does it have to you're be exactly up, enough? You're going to end up with something like that. It's not exactly in half. No, it's fine. It's fine. Basically, you want the end a little bit stiff. Right? Right. So, turn your piece of square shiny side up. Right? So yeah. then I'm going to ask you to get your glue and just squeeze a little bit of the glue out onto the square. I'm not going to tell you how much because as you get more experience, you can see how much you're gluing. You'll be able to tell after a while how yeah. much glue and that whiffs. And then we're going to use our triangle, dip it in the glue, and we're going to apply that along the edge. Now you've got a reasonable amount of working time. It's not like this is going to dry in seconds. And we're going to apply the glue exactly where the instructions told us to. And because you've sanded it, yeah, where you've sanded it, it's kind of gone light green. And then once yeah. you apply the, the glue, it makes it go dark green. So you can see at a glance where the glue is. You can apply glue onto the piece that you're putting in, but you don't really need to. And then we're going to push that piece in there. Now, this glue will be workable for quite a while. So if you don't get that at exactly 90 degrees, mm. by the time we come to do the back and the front, it will push it into shape. Okay? Does, does yeah. all that make sense? Now, you yeah. want to apply, you want to apply enough glue but you don't want to apply too much glue. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't matter because it's the inside, but you've got a little bit of glue squeeze out in there. Yeah. It doesn't matter because it's the inside. Okay? Right. And that's what you should end up with. Right. Uh, hold it up. All right. so I'm great. Thank you. Hope you are all well. I'll be getting the train set sorted out and sent out to you. No, absolutely no rush, Peter. No rush at all. Uh, Lord Peter says, is the way it's going, Tash, you'll be building a Lancaster by the summer. God, no. Oh, do you know what? Some of them are quite easy, actually. Um, if you, I mean, obviously, like, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to spoil it now. Um, guys, I am not doing the 1 to 32 scale Lancaster from... Uh, harsh yet. 
I decided not to. Um, really? I'm hoping if anyone is building it and they're YouTubing it, if anyone would like to do a bit of a collab with me, I would actually like to do the border models one, the scale <laughs> kit. Yeah. What I want to explore, I'm finally going to do it. What I want to explore is I will build this kit over a very long time, maybe a year or a year and a half. And each each video, we will compare the Harshet to the border models. We'll look at the extra work that I've got to put into making the model. We'll compare the results. We'll compare the costs. We'll look at what I can do with the model. So, for example, could I put lights and motors in it? And we'll see how cheap I can do it and then do a comparison with the Harshet one. Um, I mean, I know that all the part work companies are still using plastic cogs. Now, we had a bit of an issue with that one with the Spitfire. Now, the Lancaster has four engines, but Spitfire only has one. So that, does that mean four times as many problems? But I just feel a little bit more comfortable doing the border models one. Uh, so Lord Peter Webster, I am waiting for my delivery of Lancaster. Should be here soon. Scott had his pack. Um, don't forget to explain about glue squidge. Right, so Natasha, I use the term glue squeeze out because I was trying to be really proper and sensible, but my mm. actual term for it is glue squidge as you mm -hmm. put it together. Oh, you've, you've gone ahead and done the other side as well. Yeah, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Right. I was waiting for you. Um, so I've actually not squeezed enough glue out, so I'm going to put a bit more in. Did you have enough to do? Have you got much glue left on your palette? No. Okay, so you've probably squeezed maybe roughly the correct amount out. So, guys, do you like the little air fix trick about using the cardboard as, a, as an applicator? One thing to be careful of, Natasha. Yeah. If you get any glue on your fingers. Yeah. Obviously, what you're going to do is you're going to touch the model. Um, so, for example, if I had it, I've just touched the bottom of the model. I didn't have any glue on the thing. I did that mistake on uh, this bit up here. What, on the tank or on the jet provost? On the jet. Right. So what you'll have found is that you, you've burnt into your model your fingerprint. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It happens. But didn't know, did us no. first time, so, you know. No, it's good. That I, I think the word mistake is very strong. But I'm going to use it in the absence of a better word. Right. I've made your mistakes on the first model. Um, in fact, I'm not going to call them mistakes. I'm going to call them learning experiences. Yeah. Right. So that is stage one complete. So. I know it doesn't look very tanky. In fact, I've just done what I've told you not to do. Right. <laughs> not a problem, but no. um, right. So all I can really do now is wait for that glue to dry. <coughs> right. And then what we can do is we can lightly sand over it and then we'll get a, a finer sandpaper. And I'm not actually doing this and we'll just we'll just sand that out. But I need to be aware that it's there. It might even get covered up by the tracks. Yeah. Right. So are you happy with stage one? Yeah, I've done it. Good, good. good. Right. So what you think this is great, but I'm not sure. If you just very gently, and I mean very gently, pull the sides, can you feel how they're stuck? Do not pull them hard. Yeah. Right. So that's what I call glue being dry right um uh, set that's set but if you pulled them hard you'd be able to pull them right off because it yeah. is still wet inside now the next stage of glue drying is what i call curing it cures it goes hard right that mm. takes about 12 to 24 hours to cure so yeah. If you pull that off now, that will come off. So if you think, oh, no, I've stuck that on the wrong side, you could actually pull that off and then stick it back on again. Yeah. Tomorrow, if you pull that off, 
you'll probably actually damage all the pieces because yeah, you break it that where the glue is is actually stronger than the actual plastic so mm. if you make a mistake now is the time to spot it um, uh, i don't know Lord, Lord <laughs> i learned that from my dad as a kid and Lord Pete Webster, we all, we have all stuck fingerprints on a model at some point. Yes, some people like me more than most. Right, so if you are happy with stage one, one thing I forgot to tell you about these instructions, mm. they actually have a picture of the sprue that you will need. What does that mean? So if you look on the left on the instructions, you'll see a picture yeah. of the sprue. This is yeah. a sprue. Right. Yeah. And it has a picture of the sprue. And it yeah. has the whole sprue in grey, except for the parts that you're going to need, which they've got in black. Right, so they're the ones I need. If you look at stage two, we've got a picture yeah. of the same sprue, but you'll see yeah. three parts are missing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the three parts that we glued together in stage one. And then there's two more parts that are in black. So yeah. piece number five and piece number seven. These are actually deliberately made so that you use one sprue at a time. Um, some kits, you might, in one stage, you might need a couple of bits from sprue A, another sprue from a piece from sprue 13, uh, or M, and then another one from J, and yeah. that's the way it goes. Um, but right, so what I want you to do now is remove yeah. piece number five and piece number seven and do the cleanup. Okay. Now, I don't think the instructions are quite clear on what piece is which. So what I would advise you to do, take your piece stage one. Mm. When you've cleaned up piece number five, place that behind it. And when yeah. you've cleaned up piece number seven, put it in front so you know which one is which. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm opting to go over piece number five first. Now we do have a little piece of sprue there that's actually attached to a piece that we we want on display. Oh, that's yeah, what is that? the show. So it is very important that we that's actually going to be quite difficult to get your sandpaper in. So what you might like to do, instead of sanding it, get a knife blade and just scrape it. And just scrape that until it's smooth because if you you'll see you've got two little lines either side of it if you get your sandpaper in there you run the risk of just sanding that detail down which we don't want um, but basically use whatever you can as long as you end up with a nice smooth surface it doesn't matter what you've done you could even get your cat to lick it smooth if you wanted <laughs> I am going to cheat. I'm going to get one of my skinny sticks. So technically, I don't own this because we're a beginner. But equally, what you could do if you had a piece of sandpaper, what you can do is uh, cut a little thin strip of, 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 uh, of sandpaper and then maybe get yourself um add a push cocktail stick yeah, um yeah. but i use these kebab sticks a lot right and then what what i would perhaps do to get into that really thin bit this has got a bit of an angle on it so what i might do is just cut a little bit of this stick off there you go just make that a bit thinner i'll cut a little bit of sandpaper and then I'll super glue that sandpaper onto the stick. And I just made myself a sanding stick then, haven't I? Yes, Penny was the answer. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that no, was fine. So there's, if you're a little bit creative, there are a thousand ways to get things sorted out. Anyway, that's piece number there four we go. for me. Have you, I bet you've done both, haven't you? No, no going on to whatever number it was, seven. Seven, okay, I'm on seven as well. So you're not racing, Natasha. No. I know you seem to be a little bit quicker than me, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Sorry. I'm, I know, no, 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 please don't apologise, Natasha. 
if you can get this whole kit done in half an hour and you get a really good result fair enough if it takes you five days to do a jet provost took me five days to do that i know and the only the only question you ever need to be asking is am i happy now most of the people watching this store who've been commenting on the show they will give you advice in the comments yeah and they're absolutely lovely for it but i think one thing we will all agree with is you do not have to take their advice their advice will be in the format of what i would do is blah 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 yeah yeah and they'll and a lot of times they'll give you a bit of advice and then you'll go why didn't i think of that yeah right so we'll all start get, right so pete Webb says get the budgie to nibble it smooth well, i bet i bet um gandalf would yeah um so i do apologize um if you're commenting on facebook it comes up on mine as facebook user it will be rachel right it should be rachel. Possibly rachel possibly not just want to jump on and say hi my dad and i used to make these models when i was a no. kid great memories made good night both no yeah see again that's one of the things it's all about um is um it's the memories yeah see, doing this on a live stream i i say this just about every stream um i could probably have most of this built by now if i was sitting down and doing it and being yeah. an antisocial person um so it is taking me longer to do on stream but do you know what i'm having 10 times the fun than if i was doing it on my own with the cats interrupting me and this would be full of cat hair now actually the cat has settled down now it must be that calm before the storm time of the night as they say yeah mm. if we're still streaming about nine at uh, about 11 o'clock shadow might come up and hassle me that's his way of saying come on it's bedtime mm. right so how are you getting on are your pieces cleaned up yeah right majority of so, it what do we do next natasha first three rules see if they stick together dry dry fit yeah that right. one. that's the one so can't remember all the sayings right i'm going to stop you there what they've done mm. so i've just gone do you remember we had it this way round for stage one yeah right so again this is why we dry fit so i've gone to dry fit this piece yeah and it quite clearly does not fit right then i've had another look at the instructions and let me just bring my instructions up on big screen right so there's stage one you can see the tabs at the front and the recess bits there and then yeah. we go on to stage two the recess bits have changed right so what they've actually done is they've turned that model around so that explains why that piece doesn't fit so if i now turn this model around and do a dry fit oh look at that that fits perfectly now i didn't spot that until i come to dry fit this piece what yeah. do you think would have happened if i'd have stuck glue on this and then popped it on wouldn't have worked oh it's not fitting and now i've got glue everywhere so you need to turn that it's a really really good fit they, it, it, i am really super impressed with this i've only put three or four pieces together right so it is recommending that we apply the glue onto there but again you you apply the glue but while i'm here i'm going to dry fit this second piece so that doesn't fit because it's upside down so when we put it the correct way up that's slightly awkward to get in because of the tab system but when it does go in it's fine it's, i think that's going to leave a slight bit of uh, a seam line 
which we're not going to be in a position to sort out because we don't have filler and stuff. Yeah. That can be sorted out with filler. Seam lines are really, really, here he comes, look. I shadows. was expecting you, Shadow. I haven't seen you all afternoon. Now, look, I was expecting you, which is why I've got the, uh, the towel out for you. But I can see that you're actually in. There we go. There we go. I've just, I've just got to give him a couple of minutes of fuss. He's one of those cats. He doesn't demand an awful lot of fuss. But only about five minutes. And then he'll just settle down. It's a good boy, aren't you? have been ever so good today, haven't you? You've been playful like a kitten. And you've not really hassled me too much. You've not been biting my nose at two in the morning, which is very well behaved. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. My right, good bad, aren't you? Right, you're going to sell that. That'll probably do it. Oh, no, no, he wants a bit more. <laughs> Good boy, aren't you? He's um, he was watching me. Pet. What have you been doing? Your fur is super silky smooth. Have you been Fish. cleaning yourself? He's ever so. It's almost like silk. Fish. No, he don't eat fish. He won't eat Tuna. it. He used to love it as a kitten, but now he just doesn't. But I have bought him very good adult. It, it's a it's a special food for indoor cats that have been neutered yeah um, I, I don't know what the difference is. i mean obviously indoor he's not going to get so much exercise is he but no. uh, i guess their metabolism is is lowered a bit if they've been neutered mm, yeah um, it's, it stops them uh, it he doesn't seem them down. To be losing weight he's still got that big flap on the bottom of his belly right you're going to settle down now mister here's my good boy yeah that's it you lie down Good boy. You're going to let me get on with my model now. Right. So I'm guessing you've glued all these on now, have you? No, nope. been waiting for you. Okay, then. Right. So what you want to do now is, first of all, clear all the cat hair off your fingers. <laughs> you get the model. Um, so a bit more glue on our little here he is. He's settling down now. See what I mean, look? What, yes. what are they in there? A couple of minutes? Yep. He's happy now. He's had his little bit of fuss. He might want a bit more in a little while. But um, he might not like this because this glue is a bit whiffy. Yeah, Ooh. this is strong. It is a bit, isn't it? I have to have my window open in my bedroom. Yeah. Are you quite this. severe, um, asthma? Yes. Please don't shadow because I'm in the middle of gluing. Now, for anyone that's just joining us, I am aware that there are better ways to apply glue, but we are dealing with a my first kit. So we are trying our best to make do with only what comes out of the start set. But I think I will tell you all about Tamia. Is it Tamia? Or is it Tamaya? No idea. Anyone knows. I hear it from that. Oh, there's cat hair everywhere. I will never, ever produce another good model for as long as I have cats. Right. So you've seen me apply and you've applied glue using this um, piece of card on a, on a piece of card method. Yep. Once and once only, I'm going to show you Tamiya extra thin cement. Now, what the hell is that? This is glue in a bottle. This right. is exactly the same as uh, polystyrene cement, except that this is thick and yes. this is thin. Now, the advantage of having something thin is that it runs, it has a thing called capillary action. Right. right. Now, watch this. I dry fit my piece. Yeah. Like that. Now, for you to do that using your glue, you have got to apply the glue first. Yeah. Right, so I've applied that and that fits. Now, what I'm going to do now, you see where the join lines are? Yeah. All right. What I, all I do now is with my Tamiya Extra Thin, 
I just run a bit of glue into those lines. Okay. And then that glue will run into the lines. All right. You can apply it on the outside as well. But I tend to try and aim it on the inside where it's not going to be seen. And then we give that a few seconds and look. I've stuck that together with, with water. It's basically, yeah. it's got the same consistency of water. Okay. So as Lord Peter Webster says, it's actually a solvent that melts the parts together. Um, you'll get the same result with um, tool cleaner. Okay. I think this is basically tool cleaner. Um, but yeah, so that's the only time I'm going to use this because we are doing a start set. But what I'm trying to do you is uh, show you is just every now and again. Sorry, I've used the wrong one. That's Tamiya extra thin. Yeah. Um, what I've just used is a slightly different product, which I'll talk about in a second. So yeah. I thought I thought the brush looked funny. Yeah. Um, so this is Tamiya extra thin, and you can apply this out of the bottle. And all you yeah, do yeah. is you just dab it where you need it, and it just runs into the recesses. And it's I was told about them. Um, I think it was last night. Yeah. Now that doesn't smell as much, and yeah. also look how much mess I've made on this. And that's only mm. a bit of mess, but look, I've used exactly as much glue as I need. Yeah. All right. Now, the product that I accidentally used is the quick setting. These yeah. are exactly the same, right? except that this one dries much quicker than this one. Yeah. So I tend to use this for if you've got parts that are so small, you're holding them with a pair of tweezers. Mm. To sit there and hold it like this for ages will hurt your fingers. So I'll, use, I'll bring the part to the, to the model with the tweezers and i'll apply extra uh, quick setting yeah and now the third one that i'm going to show you this is just called tamiya cement mm -hmm. and this is exactly the same as polystyrene cement it's slower drying it's debatable that it's it, it is quite watery but once you actually apply it you'll see that it is thicker mm -hmm. much slower drying so it's handy, for example, um, this dries very quickly. Right. Um, let me just do a little bit on, uh, I'll, I'll just get a pe dead piece of sprue, sp piece of sprue I'm not using. Right. And can you, I don't know if you can see it. I have to watch on um, laptop, but it's a bit delayed. Right. Okay. So there's a little bit shiny there. That's where the glue is wet. Yeah. Right, give that about a minute and it's it's you know it's kind of disappeared a bit. It's yeah. evaporated. Now right. if you use this one, it won't evaporate as quickly. And this right. is extremely handy, the best use I can think of. Um, you don't really need it for a kit this small. If you had like an aircraft wing and yeah. you need to glue a lot of it, yeah, right, and then bring the two pieces together. Right, if you use Tamiya extra thin, by the time you've got to the last bit, the first right. bit's dried. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, I use this when I need to hold the pieces delicately with tweezers because yeah. I can't hold for that long. Um, I use extra thin when I can bring the pieces together so I can hold the pieces together, apply the glue. And I use this when I need to glue it and then bring the pieces together. Okay. Okay. Um, don't know why that says no fire on there. These are flammable, but I don't think they're any more flammable than Humbrol polystyrene cement. Um, but they do. Yeah. Anyway, that's the last time you're going to see those for now. Okay. Um, so that is stage two finished. So did you see... How well did your, your pieces uh, fit? Really good. Really good. I did find that on the last piece, this one, I did have to just push these sides out just slightly. Yeah. Um, so what we would normally be doing now is have a little look overall. 
see if there's any gaps or anything so there i could do with a little bit of sanding on the end there um and i i've not it's not really too bad on the seams i'm not going to complain about that but i want to talk about seam filling another day i think mm -hmm. it's it's not quite basic enough for stream number one but i'm i'm going to call that happy with um i'm happy with that right it's quarter to 10 are you happy to go on to stage three yep right that's fine so stage three we're still on sprue a we want piece number six and we want two little pieces at the back eight and nine now i'm not a tank expert but that looks like it's got something to do with the tracks so i think i am right there right and i would suggest stage three is as far as we go because stage four is going to involve some painting so i think we should do that on the next stream you agree or disagree yeah i agree <laughs> right so um i'll try and catch you up in a minute but i'll just do a catch up on the chat right so uh lord peter Webster says you will find your own methods to build tash yeah so basically what he means is yes i'm showing you my way to build um or a way to build um but then you uh you will you might one day go well i wonder or you might watch a youtube video and you'll see someone do something a bit different mm -hmm. always give it a try well, best example well, i can think of is um when i do my diamond paintings i always use a pickup pen don't i yeah and then was it mark fit says he uses tweezers yes now i remember saying to Teresa, that's a bit odd isn't it using tweezers and she's no i use tweezers and i think you said you use tweezers don't you at the beginning i did but then i worked out i could use the pens right so now i know three people who use use have used or do use tweezers mm -hmm. now I, i've never scoffed at it but i thought oh, i'll give it a go and um, ignoring the first 10 minutes of me using tweezers it's actually not too bad i do prefer to use my pickup pen and i do use my pickup pen but it's an alternative way um i have lost the complete sprue here it is i thought maybe the cat was sitting on it right so uh lord peter webster i have two new lo locos i treated myself to for christmas yeah, see, I wasted my money on a cricket machine this year. Um, oh, guys, I was going to show you. Um, it's a really daft project, but um, no, I can't show you because I don't know where the pieces are. Anyway, I was playing with a cricket machine mm. and I made a couple of little labels. Mm. Um, but one thing I learned is um, you basically you, you print the label off and you pick out all the bits that you don't want that's called weeding um w-e-e-d-i-n-g mm -hmm. and then what you do is you place a piece of transfer tape on the top and yeah. that picks up the, the label you then stick that onto the surface push it down really hard pull the transfer tape off and you're left with a label mm -hmm. now well, it's a very good system of doing it but it's quite wasteful because you waste that piece of transfer tape yeah so what i've tried to do is reuse that transfer tape okay now, what i've discovered is that if you if you stick vinyl onto chipboard it buggers up that transfer tape very very quickly yeah because it picks up all the dust so i was only able to get two labels done um but yeah i've done a couple of labels and they're all right um using it was really funny because it, uh, amazon had a black friday deal um hang on bear with me a sec i'm going to turn this upside down i want to get these pieces the correct way round. eight goes on that way right sorry um they've numbered these pieces different numbers so i'm going to assume they are different shape they might not be 
but it's not unwise to assume they're different pieces um yeah so um they had the cricket maker three and then they had the cricket maker three with a starter bundle comes with a ve few very basic tools and some vinyl and stuff and it was actually cheaper than buying the maker three on its own um it was more expensive i bought the advanced bundle and i thought no i don't really need that but yeah it was cheaper to buy the maker three with the accessories and it was to buy it without the accessories so in the name of um learning how to use it i don't mind wasting some of the materials right so how was this going on then oh, i've got it upside down again haven't i they don't tell you when they turn the parts around or have they oh that's a nice fit oh that's beautiful have you stuck those a9 and a8 on yet natasha no but i've got them fitted it's are you done your dry fit have you yeah on only on them two that right i can see what the difference is i don't know how significant it is but on these these eight and nine mm. you've got a a tab it's a specific shape if yep. you put it on the wrong side that tab's going to be the wrong shape so yep. you can see on the instructions the shape of the tab so if you've got it upside down you want which you should have you want the flat bit pointing down so i'm going to get that glued on quite quickly so that i don't forget and my glue on the cardboard has dried out now so i'm just going to apply a little bit more and pulling my piece of cardboard off um also i forgot to say apply a really thin layer of glue i know it's too late once it happens but if you get a little bit of glue squeeze out or as i like to call it glue squidge you've applied too much glue but it's all trial and error if you um if you apply glue on one and you get a bit of squeeze out then you obviously you've applied too much so when you do the next bit you put less glue on and then maybe the part won't stick so obviously yeah, yeah. that means you haven't put enough on and then you'll find your happy medium then right right this piece a6 it's as far as i'm concerned it's the hardest bit so far because there's not really any there is a positive stop yeah there is a positive stop so it actually wants to come down about halfway you have to look closely at the instructions yeah. and just see where that blue line is i'm not patronizing or anything you can tell the difference between blue and gray on the instructions yeah i can't tell the difference between black right and white so you've got two tiny tabs about halfway down so bring that put that piece on quite high and slide it down as far as it'll go and then that get tells you where it is now the instructions are telling you to apply the glue onto the actual body i'm suggesting that maybe we should actually apply the glue onto the piece that we're going to be putting onto the model so i'm going against the instructions on this one now i've done my dry fit i can see where the part is going to make contact whoops so on there like so and that is that it's not got what i call positive stops uh, it has got positive stops but not so this this piece there there's nowhere else you could possibly put it is there 
because mm. of the shape of the part and the sides they went in very nicely this one the stops aren't quite so positive i didn't quite apply enough glue i think the glue i used was a little bit on the dead side And there we go. That I'm happy with ish. Right, how are you getting on, Natasha? Just doing number six. Okay. Right, Lord Peter Webster says, Airfix have no choice but to improve their kits due to the amount of competition from other brands. Absolutely agree. Um, what will happen is company number one will be the best, and then company number two will improve to make themselves better than number one. So now number company number one is now... He's a second best company. Well, then their sales are going to drop, aren't they? Because everyone's buying the better kits. So then they have no choice. If they sit there and do nothing about it, then um, they're just going to lose sales. Uh, Anfield Road layout in the loft says, hi. Um, I'm only an hour and a bit. No, I'm 10, 15 minutes behind chat. That's not bad for me, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, so he's uh, so happy to be here. He's actually said hi twice. Uh, Lord Peter Webster says it's actually a solvent that melts the parts together. Hi, Lee. Uh, there's no stopping Tash. She's really loving it. I think you are, aren't you? Uh, I'm enjoying this one because I think I've got used to what I'm doing slowly, but I won't yeah. remember everything. No, well, it's fine. But what you'll find is a lot of this is repetition. So one thing we've done with each of the three stages is we've cut our pieces off, we've cleaned up the pieces, we've dry fitted them. Yeah. Now, whether you remember that terminology or not, you will probably remember, obviously you've got to cut the pieces off the sprue. Yeah. And then you've got to make them nice and neat so they fit properly. And then you're yeah. going to do a test fit first, aren't you? Yeah. So. Which I never done any of that on my first one. No. So. Do you feel that this is a better fit than the Jet Provost? Yeah, because, well, this might have fitted better if I knew what I was doing. I'm glad you used the word might because we are comparing a tank to an aeroplane. Yeah. So it might uh, not. But would it have done you... Right, if you'd have done all the cleanup on the pieces on the Jet Provost, would the pieces have fitted any worse? I think that's definitely no, isn't it? No. They wouldn't have been any worse. They might have been better. So therefore, yeah. it's worth doing the cleanup, wasn't it? Yeah. Plus, it makes the kit last a little bit longer. Um, this was only, I think this was seven quid. We'll call it seven quid. Yeah. If I can knock out this kit in a day and it's not that good, it's costing me a seven seven pound a day in kits. That's 49 pounds a week. Um now if I bought a 50 pound kit and it was more complex and I take my time and I do the pieces and it takes me three weeks to do it. Yeah. The kit has cost ten times as much, five times as much. But it's lasted me much, much longer. So right. therefore, my cost per week has dropped dramatically. Yeah. Because it's taken me that much longer to do. And the result will be better at the end. So I won't feel I've wasted my time. And I've just found another cat hair in my tank. It's, I'm going to call it camouflage. <laughs> Might as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Shadow, you are getting a big old brushing tomorrow. Look, see what I mean about him? He's just, look. Yeah. 
he's just the perfect cat. I know I'm biased because he's mine, but look, he's no. Nice like that. my bird. He's just yeah. He's had his little bit of fuss, and now he just wants to be near me. Um, right. So hi Lee. There's no stop and tash. I find tweezers are the best for me as I can't get on with pen. It's exactly my point. Um, your method isn't isn't the the best way. Isn't the worst way. Um, it's the best way for you. It may not be the best way for me. Um, right. Lord Peter Webster, I just use a tape thermal printer. Yeah, that's what I use at the moment. Well, not a thermal printer, um, but I use this label maker. But, you know, now I've got a nice piece of equipment and I'm making this desk and I'm going to be painting it all up. You know, make it the absolute best I can. Uh, right. Lord Peter Webster says no two kits are the same. And what he no. means by that is you could go out and buy that Jet Provost again. Mm. And you might find that problem areas that you had the first time round, they won't be there on the second time round. Mm. And you might come across a new problem that didn't happen on the first one. So even if you bought the absolute identical kit. Um, but what I suspect he really means is um obviously you have a basic skill set the basic skill set being remove the parts from the sprue clean them up dry fit them which uh, i didn't do on this one no but if you did that with every kit you will still find they're all different yeah. because then uh when you come to paint it um it might be a little bit different because tanks aren't the same as i know it's stating the obvious a tank isn't an airplane an no. airplane isn't a ship. Um, a jeep isn't a tank. You know, they all have their own little little twists. True. Uh, so Lord Peter Webster says natural weathering. Yeah, I've never seen a tank with a great big cat hair on it. Um, <laughs> don't forget, this is one to seventy-two scale. So if this was enlarged to full scale, that means the cat hair would be seventy-two times bigger. So yeah. that'd, be more, that'd be more like a tree trunk um right Teresa says everybody is different with the way they prefer true uh lord peter webster says or in penny's case prep work includes hair removal yeah <laughs> and this stream sponsored by veet <laughs> uh right so we've only done the first three i say only done the first three stages you'll come across models where you might only be able to do one stage yeah. Um, you'll come across other models we could get all of it done in one stream um but the very important question to ask is are you happy with tonight's work yeah <laughs> sorry i just <coughs> just seen uh, mike's comment so penny what you are saying is a motorbike isn't a submarine yes so I'm so happy that I can explain things well enough that people can understand. I don't know. There could be someone daft enough with a bike with a submarine well, over it. I mean, if you watch a couple of episodes of Top Gear, mm -hmm. uh, who knows? You could they, the next episode could be a motorbike submarine. Yeah. Uh, Mike says, at least you know I am listening. Yes, I will say that for you. Right. So I am going to get rid of this virtual one. I'm going to change my camera to overhead and I'm going to go 50 50 with you. Right. So, this is what I produced. It doesn't look like a tank, but it looks vehicular. Ve vehicular. <laughs> um, so, it looks like it's going to be some kind. I mean, look, guys, if you didn't know what that was and I said, have a guess, what would you say it is? Would you, would you say a tank? Would you say a Sherman Firefly? Would you? I mean, I think from the colour of the plastic. A box without a roof. Well, without yeah. the top one. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a storage box for your glue. Yeah, for the little things, you know, yeah. tiny yeah. things in there. You take your earrings off at night, you've got somewhere to put them. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, we've got we've got something. How's your back end, um, Natasha? Which end? This bit here. I thought that was just ever so slightly tricky. Not the two bits on that end, the single bit on that end. 
Mine's okay, I think. I think I've stuck it in the right That's place. Fine. I just I found that ever so slightly tricky and it wasn't sticking down so well. I popped a little bit more glue on. Um and it seems to have stuck down now. Um I don't looks... think mine's very much straight, but you know, I'll get that. Yeah, I'm funny that you say that. I'm thinking that. Mine's not a hundred percent straight, but I don't want to fiddle with it and break I'm it. I'm a little bit messy, but I think the tracks are going to go over that, and I think that will cover some of that up. Yeah. I think we need to worry. And I noticed, actually, I've not done very good cleanup there. I missed a little spot there. I'm not going to do it now because that's not cured. It's dry, but it's yeah. not cured. Do you remember the difference between drying and curing? Yeah. So drying, these sides are definitely dry, look. But if I pull them, they will come off. Yeah. Uh, so I need to leave that overnight, and then that will fully cure. So I'm happy with that. Are you guys happy? Are you happy, Tasha? Yep, I'm happy with how far I've got. Good, good. So that will now sit on your shelf for God knows how long until we do another, another stream. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully put my pieces away. We haven't used the brush yet. So I'll put B sprue in there. I'll put A sprue on top. Being careful where the little bit is. I'll put the three paints on there. I'll put the polystyrene cement and the glue in there and the piece. And I'll just lightly close my lid. Um yeah right so let me um right at least now i'm listening uh so would be if you tried floating it mike lol at lord peter webster hat something tash don't get asked too often how's your Who back knows? i think yeah, I, get how's asked, back I get asked a lot actually. you know what i um i i as soon as i said it i went oh oh that was a bit innuendo and I, and then i thought oh maybe no one noticed I and didn't I, notice. I was going to be sarcastic yeah. and say how's yours, but you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. I thought, no, we'll ignore it. We'll see if anyone's noticed. And then I remembered who my audience were. <laughs> uh, right. So MP says a tip for Natasha: when gluing canopies, always use white glue. Is base water and don't damage the plastic. I was going to come to that when we get. So when you glue, if you use polystyrene cement on canopies, the fumes from the glue can yes. make the canopy either crack or go white. Have you ever applied super glue to something? Mm. And you get this kind of white residue come up. Mm. That's from the fumes. And usually mm. if like, because you're enclosing the canopy, there's yeah, no way yeah. for the fumes to go. You can tell where I've messed up on it. Yeah, no, no, don't use the word messed up, right? Use Try and use the term learning opportunity, mm. right? Because every, did, was it P40F20 said, it, it's okay to make a mistake as long as you learn from it. Yeah. Yeah, so you've gone in there and you've not i will be honest with you you've not produced a perfect model let me change my view so you can actually see me i don't that's if you actually want to see me you might not want to um so you've made learn you, you've made opportunities to learn from it yeah. um i don't want to be critical because there's nothing it would be unfair to be critical um so We'll use the word mistake if you really insist. But well, it is a mistake because at the end of the day, I can learn from it. Yes, but I didn't know my finger would stick to it. Yeah, right. It's Let, let's go. There, you are not going to win any awards for that model. No, nope. but now you know where you can improve. Yeah, right. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, right. Um, so yeah. So because that glue gives off fumes, if there isn't the ventilation, those fumes will build up. So we use uh, canopy glue, which is essentially PVA glue. Now, PVA glue will stick a canopy down. It right. isn't as strong a bond as super glue or polystyrene cement, 
but it dries crystal clear and it and it doesn't give off fumes so i personally use pva glue it's you can, you'll be able to pull the canopy off but if you got the model and you shook it about and maybe lightly dropped it it should hold yeah uh, right so where are we up to all right and when there we go and when is when it's dry it's transparent um so it's quite scary because what you do is you put pva glue on the canopy you stick it on and then you get this white bit come out and you're like oh my god and all you do is you wipe it with a damp cloth or a q-tip and then you see this white line you're still panicking and then once it's dry it goes crystal clear you know how pva glue works don't you yeah uh right so uh you build an airplane tash how you messed up it's a great start there we go uh, again i think messed up is a strong word um possibly bordering on but it's hard to find the correct word um but yeah you have basically we'll we'll revisit that airplane in a year's time or maybe <laughs> five models time i'll um, try and keep it near so i can keep looking at it yeah it's just um i mean i there's something i i had the pictures i was going to look them up beforehand um, mm. anyone who does figure painting will know of a guy called duncan rhodes he used to do painting for warhammer and he's a very good painter very very good painter um but somewhere on the internet there's a picture of his very first space marine that he painted and the first thing he did was drip, dipped his paint uh, brush into the paint, painted it. He's lost all of the detail on his first model. And not being braggy, but my first model was a hell of a lot better than Duncan Rhodes' first model. Um, now, Duncan Rhodes is a much, much better painter than I am. But when you compare our first models, I think mine's better than his. So... And I've seen worse models than yours, Tasha. At least you can tell what it is. Yeah. At least yeah. I can tell it's an aeroplane. That's what I call it, even though it's got it. Yeah. It? <laughs> I can't see any bits of bare plastic. I mm. Listen, I can tell it's an RAF plane. It's, uh, I'm guessing it's some kind of trainer um, because it's obviously RAF because it's been painted red. I'm guessing it's some kind of like red arrows kind of thing. Yeah, that does remind I, me of that. It's a yeah, central flying yeah. school. Yeah, oh it's 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 a trainer then. Um, so that's what it's, that's what one of the and what you call them stuff. If on. I was to guess what it was, I would say oh, is that the JP or Jet Provost? Yeah. Which is your REF advanced trainer. They put you in something like a chipmunk or a bulldog to teach you to once you get once you upgrade to jets that's the first jet you'll fly um so I, I know what it is and it looks fine um it's only if you held that from two meters away does it look good two meters not two inches i can't get any further back because you okay. won't see me right so have a look on the screen that looks absolutely fine like that so you we're on your own you and i are only pointing out errors when yeah you that's closely. what i keep doing with it i'm pointing out the yeah, errors you will do that's natural one of the biggest problem one of the biggest things that excuse me <coughs> see one of the biggest things that model builders do and i think all of us do it we'll build something we'll put all of our effort into it and we'll go right lovely that's finished we'll show that model to someone right and and the person who sees it will genuinely go oh wow that's really really good right now we should stop there and take the compliment but we won't we'll go yeah but i wasn't really happy with how the can of why are we pointing mistakes out when we've just been given a compliment yeah woodworkers do it model builders do it everyone does it we get yeah. the compliment and then we'll go yeah but i wasn't happy with the undercut on the tail the tail's gone on a little bit funny 
you've been doing it tonight you know you're happy but you think this has gone on a little bit uneven why the only question we should really be asking is are we happy uh right lord peter webster says it's better than my first ever model i'm gonna be absolutely honest i can't remember my first model um, i know a lot of my models as a kid didn't come out that well because i paint us navy a lot and i can't I, as a kid i couldn't paint white white is a funny color you'll paint white it'll come out chalky uh, and the so oh, it does it comes out chalky now the solution now i know the solution it's hilarious yeah. all you've got to do is thin the paint down and it see i didn't out. know that on no my first i didn't know five. that as a kid <laughs> and it was last night on the live i raided they said thin it thin it out with yeah. water you only need a little bit and i was like no, well, it's didn't fine. do that on the first. I'm actually not. really glad you had to go on your own with no advice from anyone else. Yeah, and you've already admitted today that by taking the time and cleaning the parts, you've said it, that jet provost might have been better if you'd taken the time. Okay, it might have added a day or two to the build, but if you're getting a really good result at the end of the day, does it really matter? It's taking you a couple of extra days no i don't think so it's only if you're doing commission builds and you've got to bang them out in a week that it's, you've got to rush it but uh lord p webster says back in the day i used clear nail varnish for clear parts Ooh. is that what as a glue yeah because you can actually use it on 5d diamonds if somewhere don't stick you can use it get sticky yeah i never thought of that i mean i'll probably still stick with my pva glue are you after a bit of fuss now mister um yeah no i never thought of that i mean it's it's a you know but you know don't rule anything out in model making um one yeah. thing that it makes makes me laugh um i'm only a small youtuber so my influence isn't as great as some of that some of the other people wants to sit on my lap now you're going to be very disappointed in a minute because i'm not going to have my legs up here for ages come on come up um, come up here and be fast then come on <laughs> you obviously need a bit more fast don't you um yeah so obviously i don't i don't influence as much as other people um now there's a couple of things that i've been saying for ages my brush of choice is rosemary and co I think they're as good as Windsor and Newton, but they're about a third to a fifth of the price. Um, and I've said that to loads of people. A lot of people have ignored me. And now I'm watching videos because a lot of people are doing what I've been using 2023, things I wish I'd knew earlier. And there's two or three YouTubers that are going, oh, well, I've just discovered Rosemary and Co brushes. And I'm like, I was telling you that five years ago. Um, <laughs> But, you know, and yeah, and some of the tips that I've seen sound absolutely ridiculous. Um, but who would have thought years ago applied? Oh, here's here's a funny tip for you. If you want to glue, if you want to paint really tiny pieces like dials in a cockpit. Yeah. Use a cocktail stick as a paintbrush. Mm. Now, I don't know how long that tip has been has been out. But I bet you when you when that first came out, someone went, oh, I'm going to use a cocktail stick. I bet you they were laughed at the first time. Now it's a common tip. Yeah. Using PVA glue to stick canopies on. Well, how ridiculous is that? I wish I knew that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so Smith Speed says, is that not a red fire engine? Mike, you have just shown us you are not listening anymore. Um, Smith Spears, I think she's done really well. Yeah, I, listen, um, I'm trying to avoid the negative words. Normally, I avoid negative words because I try to be positive. But I'm trying to avoid the negative words because I really do think they're inappropriate. Um, I don't really like you using the word mistake um, because if you if you do something unconventional or you do so 
if you do something you don't get the result you want and you figure out how to do it as a result is yeah. it a mistake or is it a lesson just a lesson i think yeah but i suppose yeah. we all what well, i do i just go it's a mistake because it's just i yeah. don't think you will a, because a lesson like, at the time like i say someone will say to you oh that's really good and the first thing you'll do is go yeah but i really wasn't happy with how that turned out we all do it we all do it right uh she has done it done really well on it yeah you you really have uh right mp you always listen to mp when he gives you a tip because he i'll really... never remember him no but it's fine this is why i want to do small chunks because you're just going to pick up so many things what's going to happen is in the next stream we will be going over some of these again so i'll be asking you about dry fitting and clean up cutting pieces off sanding them and you'll find that We'll do them every single stream. Things like gluing with PVA glue, we might do that one in 20 streams. Some yeah. some some streams, we might not even do any gluing. Um, and then obviously the next stream, we'll be doing some painting. So you got new Yeah, I've just seen that on number four, and I'm like, what? <laughs> don't, don't panic. The only issue you're going to have is you'll have some areas where you'll think that the number two brush is far too small and then you'll you'll get other areas where you'll think it's far too big but yeah. when you think about it if you're going to give someone one brush to do as many jobs as you can what size do you go for i think two is probably the best right another tip when building model tanks always put the tracks before the upper hull it's well, more easy to build right um duly noted however because this is our first kit uh, we're going to do it exactly as the instructions say which the track the track the tracks are coming next um once we start doing other kits you know we might go right well, we've done the cockpit let's skip forward 15 stages and we'll get the undercarriage ready and we'll do what we call sub assemblies yeah. this isn't really a sub assembly model this is build build on it build on it further build on it further um but yeah we'll 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 go we'll go rogue later on uh independent the tracks are vinyl or link by link these tracks are all in one you ain't got a clue what i'm on about there have you natasha yeah right yeah. So if you look at stage four which i suspect you can't because you put it away no got it out kept it out the tracks are can you see they're one big bit yeah the, one on each here. side now some tanks that you'll get you will be put gluing on every single wheel individual oh, wheel and then you'll have to make tracks link by link and then you apply the tracks around the wheels. No, mate, that would oh, confuse listen, me straight no. away. Right. Okay. Go back in time right, yeah. to two months ago, which isn't very long ago, is it? No. Uh, and I told you you're going to buy a jet trainer, right? You're going to build it, and you're going to do a pretty good result. Would you, would you call me a liar? No. You, you would, because... Yeah. <laughs> we caught you on live stream panicking about doing your first kit and i can tell you no one will disagree with me i think a tank is an easier build than an airplane yeah i should have started with the other the other one no that you no, got no, no 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 you, it's no case of you shouldn't but i thought sod it i want to do the red plane because it it's was fine. appealing to me but you know you we've got you on live stream panicking about doing model kits yeah. now you've done your first model kit how do my you feel anxiety, about doing the next one my anxiety hit the roof when i started this plane yeah and we didn't even know you were building it well i remember one time because you didn't have them you said try doing it before this lot yeah. so i gave it a go when you said yeah. that because you didn't have these two. so how have your anxiety levels been today bearing in mind you're building it on stream and whether you're consciously thinking about it or not 
you probably don't want to make a mistake in front of 12 viewers. Yes. Yeah. So were your anxiety levels a little bit high because of that? Yeah, so yeah. now, two hours, 24 minutes into the stream, how do you feel about it now? It's easier when you've got someone else explaining it, building right. it with you. So I'm going to ask a question of the audience, and I already know the answer to this, but I want to ask them a question, right? So viewers, if Natasha had come on to the stream today, right, tried her best and completely cocked this model up, would you really have minded? Now, I already know the answer to that. Would it really bother you if Natasha had really cocked the kit up? Um, like I say, I already know, but I'm just going to confirm it because, you know, what do I know? Uh, right, Lord Peter Webster. Yeah, glues well. Uh, hi, Lord Peter. Hi, Manuel, bud. It's a lack of knowledge. There we go. So we're just building you up the knowledge. Um, think about, I mentioned diamond painting a lot because that's what I know you can do. So you're good at diamond painting, aren't you? You can't deny that. No. Would you say you're better now or when you first started? When I first started the diamond painting, it, I might have been all over the place with it, but then I learned how does. to keep it all straight-ish. So you've learned how to keep your drills straight. You've learned how to speed yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. You've learned... I'm not fast, fast, but... No, 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 I'm not fast. Well, with me, it depends what I'm doing and it depends on my mood. If I'm in the mood to really go for it, then I can go for it. Um, yeah. But you've learned little tricks and you've yeah. learned enough now that if I came to you and said, Natasha, I want to start diamond painting, I haven't got a clue, you could give me a basic level of knowledge to get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we're going to get you with um, scale model, I think. Right. Uh, a lot of people have said, we are all self-critical. It's human nature. Uh, I'm the same with painting, Tash. I've been learning watching Penny's Warhammer series. Yeah, there's a few people who are interested in the Warhammer and they've got no interest in building it themselves. They don't understand it, but they're finding it quite interesting, which is really nice. Um, mm. Teresa says, not all as it's a learning curve. Um, right, a lot of people have said, don't ever worry about not being sure. I'm surprised how well she's picked it up. There you go. That says it all. We're surprised at how well you've picked it up. Um, so actually what we're saying there is we didn't expect you to be as good as you are. Mm. Yeah. You're doing a lot of focusing on what you've done wrong. We're all doing focusing on what you've done right. Well, we weren't expecting. A, I, I didn't think you'd get it as good as that. Um, I made a comment on Facebook. Um, yes. It's really good. I'm not going to say it's it's very good for a first model. It is very good for any stage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. With everything in hobbies, you are not timed. Yeah, that's the most important thing. It's only when you're doing things, you might see videos of Warhammer painters. And oh, God, going... yeah. Um, little history and all, um, Lindsay and all that. I was saying, are you going to, are you going to, can we convert it to Warhammer? I said, hell no. I'll get more paint on my fingers than I would online. They're so tiny. I don't think I could do it's, them. Uh, no, it's just different skill set. It's different techniques. Um, yeah, it's just it's just different techniques, that's all. Uh, and it's not really to, – to get to a good level, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something slightly controversial here, right? To win a Golden Demon, now Golden Demon is the figure painting contests, and that's the ultimate prize. To win a Golden Demon, you need skills. You need imagination, you need skills, you need to put it all together. But to get to a good standard, you don't need skills. You need to know the techniques. To get yeah. it beyond good, you need skills. Yeah. Right? You need to know... Um, how to prime models, then how to paint over the top. You don't even need to prime them, actually. You need to understand 
the darkness in the recesses and lightness on the upper surfaces. They're yeah. not skills, they're just techniques. Yeah. yeah. You need to maybe understand that greens and reds go together, yellows and blues go together. You don't put blue and green together, it doesn't work. Yeah, these are all the things. None of these are skills, these are just knowledge. And once you have that basic knowledge, you can produce a good model, what we call tabletop standard. To get to golden demon standard, you need really good skills. Um, right, so a lot of people have said, I was shocked when I saw the Facebook page. Uh, My post you, on the plane. Yeah, and you didn't get red paint on the scre screens. Um, I wouldn't have even got as far as Tash. Well, that's debatable because, let's say, two, two or three weeks ago, Tasha was saying, pretty much the same uh you would Teresa. we all say we can't do something till we actually try so yeah there we go um so no one's answered my question about what it was yeah if tasha had mucked this model up would we actually have minded but i know the answer is going to be no we wouldn't we're happy to see you have a go and if you finish this model and then go do you know what i've given it a go and it's really not for me we won't be upset by that um mark he's a funny one isn't he you're a comedian mark um i've not got your patience for models like that tasha i'll stick to dping so he's got the patience to do diamond painting he's got the patience to do matchstick models but he hasn't got the patience for for doing models right okay mr comedian uh, <laughs> not. uh no it's do you know it was something i was doing uh i can't remember what it was i can't remember what it was but um oh so people a lot of people say to me normally people who don't do the hobbies i do they go oh you've got a lot of patience and my usual response is um no it's not really patience it's just the desire to do it i'm enjoying what i'm doing i know what it was i know what it was um it was the notre dame kit that i was doing so yeah normally with the models and that i don't think i'm particularly patient <laughs> yeah i just seen that comment sorry I'll stick to pole dancing. Can you imagine Mike doing pole dancing? Oh, God, I'll have nightmares, man. I won't sleep for bloody rest yeah, of my life. Yeah, that's put me off. Uh, that's put yeah, me off, put um, me off. Sleeping for, for life. Yeah. Uh, Lord Peter, why would anyone mind she actually built your first kit? So well done. There you go. So we, we want to see you have a go. People are tuning in to see you have a go. Right. I think what it was when I was when doing trying to do something like this it was getting bullied with doing it if i did everything wrong uh that's what i was i'm still oh, scared yeah. of if someone you started picking bullied. on me with it why do you think you'd be bullied because you know nasty people out there right so basically i will say now i think most people know this this is a no bully zone um i have some very good moderators out there so if I can't catch negative comments, usually what will happen is if you if you do anything nasty, we'll be nice to you. We'll probably only give you a 30 second time out for the first offense. Um, but if you repeatedly do it, you are not welcome on my channel. And I want to reiterate that because obviously you didn't know that as well as I'd like you to know it. But yeah, this is a no bully zone. This is all about having a go. Um, if you watched every one of my videos, you will see that not everything has come out perfect. And if you watch my next three or four Eddie Stobarts, Jesus Christ, even I'm quite ashamed of them. Um, but I've done it. Um, it took me an hour to get all the slats in on the trailer. No, it didn't. It didn't. I actually did. That's my shortest video um, because I thought i'd hit the record button and i hadn't 
so I didn't even film it and it was quite complicated but it was the axle on the trailer and I thought do you know what we've already done an axle so I just went yeah this is that bit and that's that bit and that's that bit and there we go and then I did the slats but uh yeah so this is yeah look Teresa says you're amongst friends here now and um, basically if you're not an encouraging person you've got the wrong end of the stick about hobbies it's all about helping and what's the name of that facebook group um crafting with friends what, what was it called crafting with friends and family yeah now who's the admin of that group then uh quite a few of us could it be you natasha i opened it about god knows how long ago yeah. and what what's it all about is it about being encouraging and getting on with things and just chilling out yeah yeah anything you like to do with any hobby crap yeah. you do. and we all encourage each other don't we and when i posted the first beginning of my plan i actually had people who i didn't even know who hadn't seen in the group and then i get random people are commenting on it right so i must be doing bit, something right a little bit like this stream then is it yeah yeah funny that isn't it yeah yeah so there you go um so yeah um but yeah i was saying about the patience i i don't think i've got particularly got extra patience because i just get on with it um but when i did that notre dame metal earth kit i did make a comment that there was a couple of sections um i i've needed more you know i i could imagine some of the saints getting running out of patience with it it was really tricky and it's like the only thing keeping me going it's like when you've got to do 16 really tiny fiddly bits mm. you're like yeah i've just seen the next stage of instructions and it's a lot more fun than this one and the only thing keeping you going is knowing that once you finish it you've got something completely different um right so you're amongst friends now tasha i'd try pole dancing too right <laughs> there we go that is never a true word those who doubt others are jealous as they probably can't do what you did so how many people would have the guts to come onto a live stream and try something they've never done before. Not many. Good question, Good question or not? Yeah. So Swiss B says Mark fit. Oh my God. Mark. I know. I've just been reading them. Yeah. Oh. So Adfield Road layout in the loft. Good stream. Big thumbs up. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Lee. Uh, Lee likes to scratch build lots. Um, I need to see some of your videos with scratch building um, because it's something that I want to get into. Um, I bought a book. I don't know why I'm looking for things on there because as you can see, I couldn't find anything. I can't find my cats in there. That's where they go when they hide up and they don't want to be found because they know I'll never find them. Um, but yeah, I bought a book um by ak interactive about scratch building but it's it's very basic and it's very generic um so it's something i'd like to get get on with uh to drive right smith speeds mark fit penny and natasha are doing a demo next week are we cool. are you still talking about pole dancing you better yeah you, they'll probably be jealous of us because we'll be so good at it uh a lot of people webster i <laughs> in me to build what i know on live yeah um i don't know see i think yeah that's that's way i caught up with the chat um yeah live building i can still remember my first live stream it was probably the worst live stream ever um because i think everyone does this you you'll ask the viewer the viewer a a question now you've got a 10 second delay or six seconds before the viewers even hear what you've just said then you're waiting for a response the only way they can respond is via chat so you've got to allow the time for them to chat and then that's if they're going to reply 
and then there's a few second delay between them hitting the enter and enter button and you seeing it. Then you've got to read it and respond to it. So basically, if I ask a question, there's a big, long 30 second pause. And it is probably the most I, I don't I Well, it would have gone now because Twitch delete uh, live streams after so many days. But yeah. it is the worst live stream ever. Um, now, either V's come in. That's V. Are you not going to open CV? We know you love V more than he loves you. Yeah, no, he's just going to sit there. And, no, he's he's going to have a snooze. Um, right, we'll be doing a new video. Start to do scratch build. Brilliant, I look forward to that. I've got a question. What is scratch build? Right, good question. Very good question. So scratch building is when you build something from scratch. Now, that sounded patronising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's say... Um, you want is a good example so i'm going to build the lancaster bomber now the okay. harshet version comes with the dam that it blew up right now i don't know if i can buy that dam in 1 to 32 scale so i'm probably going to have to make it so what i'll do is i will build that using plastic cards paper mache glue tennis balls whatever i can find my hands on and that is called scratch building so it's not buying this this we bought this off the shelf we build it right if you were scratch building it you would perhaps get a piece of card and you would cut it to that shape then you would get the back piece and you would cut that to shape and then you glue them together then you cut the next side and you are literally Building that sounds scratch. complicated to hell. Um, yes and no. It's it's beyond my current skill set. Um, I'm not saying I couldn't do it. I'm not saying I can do it. Um, yeah. What I'm saying is I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I'd be the same. Yeah. Um, now, I've done kit bashing, which is not the same as scratch building, which is... Um, at its most basic level, um, this Spitfire, if I was to cut the wings off and stuck hurricane wings on, right, I've just bashed two kits together and then I've come up with something different. Uh, that's a really terrible example. But you do a lot of kit bashing in Warhammer. So you might get a mod. You might get two, three Space Marines that all look the same. And then you'll get another model you think I'm, i like his head so you'll cut the heads off and then you'll glue the new head on that's kit bashing um but to make to scratch build in in warhammer what you'll probably do is get clay and you'll shape the arm and you'll shape the body and then you'll build everything it's literally it literally means building it from scratch starting from scratch wow no couldn't do it listen like all i'm gonna say is you couldn't do model kits a month ago. No. Right. I'm not saying you'll be able to scratch build. It is a skill involved, you know, as opposed to, well, I don't know. I don't know how to skills, how to scratch build. So no, scratch no, building might be easy. Yeah. Um, it might just be a case of knowing the rules. Um, but what I do know is if you take anything and you break it down to a series of shapes, yeah, um, there you go. Let's take my new friend. I'm going to have to unplug you, mate. I apologize. Oh, I want him. I'm nicking him. I'll tell you what. Right. Let's take this as a very, very simple. So this is a bottle of glue. Yeah. Now, you look at it as a bottle. Right. One way to look at it is you've got a cube. Right. And then you've got a cylinder, a pipe stuck right. on the top and then just fill in the top of the pipe. Right, so that's three shapes there combined together. One cube, one pipe, and then a circle. Yeah. So you've broken that down into shape. Have I got that right, Lee? Is that is that my is that correct interpretation of scratch building? If you break everything down into basic shapes, 
So where you need to build squares, to build a cube, you need six squares, don't you? So then you glue those six squares together. Then what I'll probably do is I'll take another a, a rectangle and then I'll curl it around to make a cylinder. I'll stick that on top and then I'll get a circle and I'll glue that inside and I'll make that bottle. That's how I interpret scratch building. Right, Mark Fit, I've only just got the courage to show face on stream, but not craft on it. Well, it, it might come, it might not. Uh, I can't build as well as talking. I feel guilty not. Yeah, I used to. Um, everyone's got used to me, the fact that I may respond to your comment in a minute, or in this particular case, I will respond in oh five minutes that's really good for me that's a five <laughs> minute old comment usually anything less than an hour these days is good for me um right i hope it's v or oh, we're gonna see a murder live on youtube <laughs> it was v i think you just come out and went to the toilet uh kids are good scratch builders they can turn a box into there you go that's scratch building so you remember at school you used to collect all the all the bottles of water and stuff and and the cereal packets and you used to turn them into robots or airplanes or ships. That is very crude sh uh, scratch building, turning a cereal box into a building. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. it's very very crude. You wouldn't win any awards for that. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, right, Anfield Road, uh, just finished the card kit build with the lights in. Oh, nice. I really did like that um, service station you were doing. Uh, you do know how to, Penny. You just built. Do you know what? That. Do you see what lovely audience I've got? I've just um, told you I'm no good. I don't. I didn't say I'm good or bad at scratch building. I said I don't know how to. Yeah, but I've just scratch built my second desk. Remember the one over there? Yeah, that isn't there anymore. Um, I've actually turned it into a bench. I've got to show you this, guys, because I'm actually quite pleased with this. So, what used to be my desk is now a bench. Wow, I mean, three sides of it was a, is the same desk as it was before. Um, but I just cut it back a bit. And I raised it up a little bit, and now it's a nice little bench. And yeah, all of this, I made that. Nice. And I just sat there and said, I can't scratch build. So yeah, maybe it's interpretation. Yeah, um, it could be. So you yeah. don't realise the interpretation of it. Yeah, and I can't even like, I can't even find cameras, let alone build thing. There we go. That's me. <laughs> uh so anfield rose says scratch building is easy yeah it probably is i think it's the same as making models and painting figures it's more about knowing the rules and the techniques than it is about being skillful uh right scratch build penny does it although she just doesn't realize building yeah look building her tables is scratch built she has no plans it's exactly right. i can't do plans and one thing that people do compliment me on and i do acknowledge this sometimes you've got to acknowledge your good points yeah. uh, i will do something and i will plan to have something and it doesn't work out so i just change the plan um i've got a little bit down here it was supposed to be a shelf and it didn't quite work out as a shelf the dimensions were wrong so now it's, and this bit as well on the corner there because of the length of the computer uh, it's set quite deep into the desk and it's really awkward to keep reaching under every time I want to switch the computer on. So yeah. I'll cut back the table and I'm going to cupboard it all in, but I'm going to cut a little hole out in the cupboard door so I can just reach in and press the power button. And then anytime I need to access the computer, I've got the cupboard door to open. Now, that I didn't plan for that. It was just that things didn't quite go smoothly. Um, but the little shelf down here is now becoming a cupboard. I've got the hinges today. And 
I'm also going to put a side door on the side of the desk. So again, so I can get to the computer. And this desk looks nothing like my first original plans. No. So yes, they are right. Um, I say I can't scratch build and all my, so there we go. Look, you're worried about people bullying you. Everyone has just told me I'm wrong. I can scratch build. So there you go. Right. Uh, excuse me one second. No problem. <coughs> Sorry. I, I couldn't find the mute button quick enough. Uh, road. Yes, I come on your show if you want. If you want. Uh, glue a candle in the glue lid. You just scratch filter. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So what he's saying there is there's a little recess inside that. That was me, not a murderer. <laughs> um, so there's a little recess in there. You could put a candle in there. Um, yeah. So look, your, your most basic candle holder. What are those posh bottles of wine with the kind of funny shaped um, bottles that everyone used to use as candle holders? You used to get this big bottle and it kind of comes out a bit. What you do yes. is just taper the end of the candle, shove it in. And then you burn the candle and all the wax falls down the, the bowl. And then you take it out, you put another candle and then you start putting different color candles in. So you get different wax. And it's, it's more about the wax on the bottle than it is about the candle. Um, everyone must have had one, must have had parents who did that. It was a very 80 thing to do. Um, right. Scratch build a useful item and I am caught up. Ah. Oh! I just thought I'd caught up with chat then. Uh, Mateus, <laughs> see, if you need to know anything, Peter Webster has the answer. Mateus. So it was, what does that mean? It, was the fact, it was the shape of the bottle and the fact that all the candle wax would drip down all over the bottle. So you would end up with this bottle covered in wax. And if you use different color candles, you'd have white candle wax over red candle wax over white over blue and it used to look really nice good job you're not in glasgow tag i am in glasgow um so tag it could be called um do you know what i'm wondering actually you know i have these intros i do keep meaning to do the new intro um, yeah. i lost the intro when we changed over on melon I'm wondering, actually, because I can't decide between the Anglia TV. Um, I like to use the Anglia TV intro because I'm from Anglia. Same here. But obviously, I live in Scotland. But I'm sorry, right? Much as I love Scotland, the STV intro is naff. It's not as good as a big old silver silver night. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So, um, the intros that I'm using from a pre recorded videos, I've actually got the Anglia Night and it goes and live from Norwich. But I've over overdone the Norwich with um, um, I keep forgetting his name, Glaswegian comedian Kevin Bridges saying Glasgow. So now it says, and now, like, on now from Glasgow. So, but what I might do is I might do two stream intros, uh, one based on the Anglia TV and one based on Scotland. And then when I'm, when I'm at the hotel, I can do the, the, the Anglia one. When I'm in Scotland, I can do the Scotland one, even yeah. though London's not in Anglia. Because what's London? Thames Television? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, give me a second, guys. Um, that last sneeze is just um, made my nose a bit active, but I can't find my tissue paper, so I'm going to do the absolute worst thing, and I'm going to blow my nose with kitchen roll. I do that. Oh, you shouldn't really, because it's very rough. Um, give me a second. I'm going to actually hit the mute button. Okay, do one. <laughs> More than one second. I'm sorry, Natasha. I didn't hear you. I was ignoring you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't oh. believe you. One minute. No, I was ignoring you. Do you not believe me on that one? 
Oh, time. I blew my nose, which cleared my eyes a bit, and then I noticed my glasses were filthy. Yeah. I wondered. I wondered why everything looks like I'm looking through net curtains. <laughs> You know when you're sitting there looking out the window and you try to pull a non-existent net curtain out of class and you're like, oh no, it's my glasses, they need to clean. Yeah. Um, right, so three hours. That's a pretty good stream for us, isn't it? Quite short. Yeah, yeah definitely. So what are you up to for New Year? Nothing. Nothing? Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah, I was very, very spoiled. Were you? Yeah, <laughs> I was spoiled for Christmas. Good, good, good. And it, mate, it it cheered me up quite a bit. People thinking of me, even though I couldn't return it. Yeah. But they all said we don't give to receive, so so it was you quite know, nice. I actually had a wonderful Christmas because of the giving. I mean, I've obviously I bought you a few scale models, and I bought the the mat. And you've yeah. used it and you've had yeah. fun. So that's a good result. Um, I also bought Building with the Boys a model kit. And uh, I was, you know, I, I do appreciate his channel. He's done a lot of entertaining for me. Yeah. He'd done a weekly update and he'd spotted the. Wait me one sec. Oh, yeah. I know what it is now. I remember. I remember. I remember oh, what it is. I've actually pulled two kits down because I remember I bought one. I keep buying myself Christmas presents. Forget another one. <laughs> I haven't bought myself nothing for Christmas. I oh, I do. I, I, so I have a little group of friends. I've been friends with them for donkey's years. And we used to, every, it was about 10 of us. And what we used to do was spend about five or ten packs on each person. And what you find ha happens is you end up spending 50 quid on what is essentially tat. Yeah, and yeah. then in return, they will buying you five pound presents. So you receive 50 quid's worth of tat. Yeah, and yeah. that's basically what happens. So we made the decision that we're not buying each other presents. We're buying ourselves a present. And then whatever we buy on Christmas Day, we take a picture of it. We post it on the Facebook group and say, thanks ever as so much, guys. This is what you bought me for Christmas. And uh, so I, I, I accidentally forget I've already bought myself a Christmas present. So I spent quite a bit of money on myself this year. Um, I bought myself a cricket maker. And I also bought this. Wow. Forgetting that I've already got the Matchbox Corsair, but this is a newish kit that's come out and it looks... Well, I've never heard of Magic Factory before, um, but the detail looks amazing. Yeah. Um, let me show you this. I mean, that'll scare the hell out of you, won't it, Natasha? Uh, yeah, just looking at um, the box. Yeah, but it's it just looks really, really nice. And I do like the Corsair. I love those bent wings. Yeah, that would confuse me. Really, really nice. Um, not cheap. Um, not expensive. But anyway, so going back to the subject I was saying. So building with the boys, which I know he's now going to come on the stream because he always comes on just as I mentioned his name. Um, <laughs> he'd said he'd seen something on the internet. And he yes. didn't even know if it actually existed. Yes. So I bought it for him. And I, I accidentally clicked it twice and put a different address in. Oh, did it that's randomly I do it him. itself? Yeah, it just, this one came as well to me. So that's why wow. I bought him. Which is funny because two things about this kit. One is, you know, I don't particularly love Spitfires. It's not that yeah. I don't love Spitfires. It's just there's so many Spitfires out there. Yeah. Uh, and also, I don't scale in 1 to 32 scale. So, you know, but it just looks lovely. It is actually a nice-looking kit, and it isn't little. No, I mean, Spitfire is not a big aeroplane, but no. that is big. That looks um, big. So, yeah. 
but he uh, he did a live uh, not a live but he uh, he did an unboxing Christmas presents and his yeah. reaction was wonderful. I and thought I thought he was nearly going to cry. Yeah. Happy cry. Well, first I he said, oh, cry. thanks, Penny. You didn't have to. And he goes, I know you're going to say, no, I know I didn't have to. So first yeah. off, if you're not, if you're not wanting a present, that's when I want to get you one. I'm not, you know, when you say, oh, you don't have to get me anything. Yeah, I always I'm say that. What I like to buy for. The yeah. people who say to me, I hope you buy me a really expensive Christmas present this year for me. You are most likely going to get nothing off me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and secondly, he was so humbled by it. He really did love it. And he laughed because it was a little bit of a joke in it in that he didn't know it existed. Yeah. Uh, I will be, I will be honest with you guys. I'd already been thinking what to get him. When I saw that video, about two minutes later, it had been ordered because I'm quite good at finding stuff on Google. Yeah. Uh, it came up on Amazon, so Amazon's even better because it didn't even have to pass through my hands. But like I said, I don't know what happened. I must have clicked a funny button and ended up buying it twice, one being sent to him and one being sent to me. So it's funny that, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know how it happened, but, you know. No, it just like, probably randomly jumped in your basket. Mm, yeah, I don't know how it happened, but, you know. No. Right, Lord Peter Webster, I'm going to leave you now. My meds are kicking in, struggling to keep my eyes open. Take care all. Good night. Just take care. Thanks for the contribution. Uh, good night, Lord Peter. Night, Peter. Hope you have a good night. Well, I think he will do. His meds have just kicked in. <laughs> Uh, Anfield Road says, nice kit, will be good to build. Uh, MP says, that Corsair is an excellent kit. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's got a paint job that I've never done before, um, but it looks like I'm capable of, based on the, on the Mosquito, I think I can achieve it. I don't think it'll necessarily be easy, but I don't think easy is fun. Within my skill set, and a little bit tricky is the way I like to work. Yeah. Um, if everything's easy, there's no point doing it. True. And I like to be within my skill set with a few things that are just pushing my boundary a little bit. Um, that mosquito that I've done, some of yeah. that masking was a little bit. And I'd never done, I'd never done, believe it or not, I'd never done. Uh, REF camouflage with an airbrush before. Um, what well, I've rephrased that I've never done REF camouflage correctly. I've done it as one to 72 scale kits as a kid, and I just literally got my brush and went, Yeah, that looks about right. Um, but this one, I actually copied all of the instructions, I cut them out, I used the, the photocopied instructions as yeah, well. obviously. I know there's one or two haters on my channel, so I did have to explain or felt the need to explain that if you are photocopying stuff for personal use and not passing it on, uh, selling it on, it's not copyright. No. So if you get your instructions and you photocopy them, that is completely legal. If you photocopy your instructions and sell them, that mm. infringes copyright laws. And why yes. are you eating chocolates in front of me? It's not fair. You're winding me up. I knew there were roses as soon as I saw the bag. I just saw a little bit of strawberry blue. cream. I can't help it. Oh, do you know I what? I, as a kid, I was the only one who liked the strawberry ones. Same here. Mm. I None quite, of the nervous in my family like them, so I, yeah, to I do them. like the coffee ones. No, and I, I'm okay with the orange ones, but I'm I not can't have the orange ones. They go in the bin. No. Well, what I used to have to do as a kid, I was a little bit sneaky. I wouldn't touch the strawberry ones. I would eat all the ones like the ones with nuts, the ones that everybody else liked. I would be eating them. And then I knew that we'd get just the, just the orange and the strawberry ones left and no one else would eat them and I'd have the rest of the tin all to myself. But my, under bag. 
<laughs> My understanding is the majority of people don't like strawberry ones. Now, last month, you like Shadow? He's doing his patrol now. I buy um, strawberry ones offline. I get a bag of them. Yeah. Are you on patrol? You are, aren't you? He does his patrol two or three times a day. He just walks around the house, making sure everything's okay. Yeah. Hello, are you come to join us now? Nope, she's gone to investigate. Computer might go off, by the way. She has a terrible yeah. habit of running behind the computer where all the plugs are. Oh, we go. Hello. And if she knocks the power supply, the computer just goes off abruptly. So if that happens, and I hope it doesn't, because it's going to muck my computer up. Anyway, so yeah, I got these model kits from Man's Model Moments. Man's, I forget which shop's called, but Man's Model Moments. Some nice little World War One kits. And he chucked in a few uh, Quality Street, and they're oh. all strawberry and orange flavour. And I, I don't know if he chucked them in because that's the ones that no one likes or if they were random. But I did send him an email. I said those chocolates went down a tree. They were <laughs> some of my favourite. Co but co they don't do coffee so much now, do they? No, I, I don't like coffee and chocolate, but I'll drink it. Do you remember that Revels advert where that yeah. man was having an eating contest with some, he looked like a sumo wrestler? And what they had to do is they each eaten a revel until they get to the one that no one liked. Yeah, yeah. and then that and person loses. Pulls his face, and then everyone's gone, ha ha, orange. And he goes, I like orange. And they're like, oh. And then they got to like the coffee one, and this guy's gone, ah, ah. yeah. It used to be like find the coffee, weren't it? Yeah. Yeah, between your friends and all that. The one I always used to not like with Revels was the toffee. Because no, every they were other, weird. Every other Revel, you could bite straight into it. And you bite into the top. Ah, that's quite hard, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, anyway, let's do a catch-up. Uh, I've got a bag of Quality Street by me. Um, yeah, I didn't do many chocolates this year, but I think I'm going to go out and buy some in a minute. Well, um, it cost me one fifty each, and I got another two bags of heroes. Oh, did you hear? I don't know if it's true or not, but they had this thing in Asda, and what it was was they had Pringles, and then in small writing they had one pound thirty-five, and it said, and then in big writing, get thirty-five pence. And underneath it says in cash back. Yeah. Right. Now everyone had misread that and they all thought that Pringles were 35p a tube. So loads of people had just like been filling up their trolleys full of Pringles. And then the next day when they've got their receipt and they're like, oh, they've all been taking the Pringles back and customer services inundated with all these returned Pringles. Yeah. And I just thought that's, that's. Yeah, if it was me, I'd be like, you can't have them. That's what you get for being greedy. Yeah. You know, just because something's 35p, you, you, you weren't going to buy them beforehand, but now they're 35p, you yeah. want to buy 50 tubs of them. Yeah. Yeah, no, you deserve I it. see them people doing that as well. Yeah. Right, MP says, I'm working on a Paladin howitzer self-propelled gun from the Desert Storm campaign in Iraqi one to 72 scale is that i like no how big that is because i did the willie's jeep i know it's a completely different model but i did the willie's jeep in one to 72 scale and that's small um i know self-propelled guns are big um but right uh teresa do you just show it off now and a bag of strawberry dreams gotta have them yeah and phil I said hi mp and that is chat caught up with and that is do you know what so i've just had before the stream i had me golden syrup pudding i do like them with me pot I've got one in the cupboard i'm gonna munch on in bed if you guys don't behave i'm gonna go to my drawer and i'm gonna get my little individual christmas pudding and i'm gonna eat that in front of you don't like that do you not? I love them. No, I think I, it's because I don't like alcohol in things. Right. 
Oh, they haven't always got alcohol in them, though, have they? I just don't like it even without it. I've tried, and, and I can't get I think it's I've, the texture. I've got my one big weakness is Greg's Christmas cake. I have been eating, since I've been back from London, I have had Greg's Christmas cake, one one bar, sometimes two, every single day. Yeah. Um, we have used more toilet paper than normal as a result. Because it is very fruity, isn't it? Um, but at least I've not been lowered this month. Because I've been, um, yeah, lots of Christmas cake, lots of fruit. So one good thing about Christmas is lots of dried fruit. Yeah. yeah. Mister, have, oh, have we been mean to you? Have we taken up your bed with two models? I know. Tell you what, let me move that for you. I think he's actually telling me it's bedtime. Not that what, I'm time, what time does he do that? Is it like eleven o'clock? He then? feels like doing it. Whatever yeah. time that he's he feels is bedtime. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's he rules the house. Um <laughs> I'm really not sure who the alpha is in this house. Um most days uh, probably shadow. Probably. Um most days I do feel it's me. Um, but then there are moments it's like this morning. Um, it's um, a fact. I tell you what, I'm going to show you this. I shouldn't. So this is the first bit of uh, one of my Eddie Stobarts. I'm not going to show you the Eddie Stobart bit, but I want to show you the intro for or the, the first bit in this video. Yeah. Right. So. The screen is black for a long time, guys, for a reason. I'm explaining I've got two issues. Uh, the first one is regarding my, for some reason, oh, here comes here come Spirit. Let's switch to, uh, oh, no, she's having a muck around first. No, she's going to, she's chasing the muck. You'll see her in a minute. You won't see her in a minute. Right, so for some reason, this front view camera yeah. that you're seeing me through now, it works absolutely fine using uh, Melon. Uh, the yeah. For some reason, OBS won't won't pick it up. But right. I don't know why. Um, and there is another another issue why I can't stream. But yeah, watch the beginning of the video, guys. And so it is black for a reason. And then suddenly the pictures come up. So this is supposed to be a video for issues 109, 110 and 111, but I've come across two problems. First of all, my front camera has stopped working. Uh, that in itself isn't a major problem. It just means you won't be able to see me front on. Uh, the second problem I've got is my cats have decided to do a sit-in protest. Uh, I am filming this straight after I filmed the last week's episode. It is now half past three in the morning. It's far too early for their breakfast, um, but they're not having it. I'm up, they want breakfast. So they're gonna make sure I can't film on YouTube, as you can see. Um, now, I've told Shadow off and he's in a hump. Um, and I know when he's in a hump because- Look out for Spirit having a dream. Um, it's yeah. like he knows who all the cameras are. And as you can quite clearly see, he's got his back to the to the body camera. Um, so I'm going to have to take a break. I think I might even have to uh, have to give in to their demands and give them an early breakfast. So, yeah, there you go, guys. So I got up really, really early this morning and they yeah. always want breakfast as soon as I get up. And I, normally I'm up about six or seven, so they get breakfast then. Uh, I was up about two o'clock this morning. I, I don't know why I couldn't sleep. Probably because I keep taking afternoon naps. Um, but yeah, they, obviously because I was up, they were demanding breakfast and I wasn't giving them breakfast at two in the morning. No. Uh, so because I was awake, I started doing some filming and they just kept jumping up on the table. It's as though they knew it's as though they were saying, right, if we don't have breakfast, you're not filming. And they just, I put the towel down so that I can do some work on the Eddie Stobart. And both yeah. of them just plonk themselves down. And like I say, with Shadow, if you tell him off, 
he'll actually turn his back to you and not look really yeah he does that if he's if he's upset with you he will he will sit like this right and he did that with the camera i was i thought right i'm gonna film you being in a hump and then he just he sort of looked at the camera and he just turned himself around and i i swear he knows yeah and uh yeah he just got humpy and but it was just really funny because after i'd filmed it and i watched it back i could see spirit having little dreams and her little feet are going so she she's just having a whale of a time but um yeah they're both there now it's so i know it's bedtime she spent all day sleeping and now it's bedtime i i don't get that um but no. as i always say if she doesn't have five a good five or ten good naps in the day she just doesn't have the energy to have a good sleep at night yeah uh right so anfield hi mp uh you can have the christmas pudding penny yeah no i just i like them uh i'm going to bed see you sunday yes so guys don't forget the f35 build um so what's gonna oh my christmas present from i'm gonna call them the smiths so that is the peace cool b25 super fortress that is going to london with me it might be going to london with me we'll see and when i finish the notre dame i'll start on that so sunday myself and dominique are having a build off yes oh sorry guys we are building this yeah so i'm going to be posting a fa facebook not facebook a paypal link i will be scrounging money off people um so basically myself and dominique are going to be building the exact same kit um the only rule that we have is that you have to use i've stolen one rule from someone else and made a rule up you've got to use everything in the kit at least once so for example this will come with a paintbrush you've got to use the paintbrush but you can yeah. you can paint one little bit with a uh, with a paintbrush and then airbrush the rest um and where there's options you've got to try and use where possible you've got to use the option that requires the most pieces so in yeah. other words we're going to build an undercarriage down um what we're going to then do are uh, we have a two hour time limit to build it at the end of that two hours we will be asking the viewers to unbiasedly vote on which one they think is the most pleasing i'm not going to use the words better i'm going to say more pleasing yeah um, what i mean by unbiasedly is just because it's my channel don't mean you think you should be obliged to, to vote for me um during the show we will be encouraging people to give us small donations or large donations via paypal yeah. and the person whose model is voted the most pleasing gets to choose which charity all of that money goes to we may not raise much money we may raise thousands i don't know well it's a thought that counts yeah yeah so um it might be going over the pond and going to a dutch charity or it might be going to a british charity it might even go somewhere i haven't even decided what charity i want to pick yet um the stream will be running from 10 10 o'clock my time which is 11 o'clock dutch time the actual building starts half an hour after the stream so obviously we do all the intros and everything uh, we will have the two hour time limit we'll hit two new year's days the first one will be half an hour into the build or one one hour into the show which is 11 o'clock for me but it'll be 12 o'clock in holland and then an hour later it'll be new year's day here at half past 12 my time we stop building we might even have a timekeeper do you want fancy being a timekeeper yep as long as you right. message me what i've got to do excellent and then and now i'm going to do the comments yes so we've got the very kind and very glamorous uh natasha who's going to be helping us um because normally when we when we do comments i stop and i read the comments um i'm going to be 
as basically the kind of person I am is right up to the second we start the build, I'll be all, oh, good luck, may the best person win, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. That's, for those two hours that we're building, I'm a little bit competitive. I will really want to beat Dominique. And I think he has the same viewpoint as me. The second we stop building, it's all back to being, oh, God, that's a nice model. Yeah, yeah, you deserve to win. Or, yeah, I beat you, ha, ha whatever. Um, so, obviously, I don't want to have to keep popping up and checking the comments. I want to just get on and build. And Dominique does it. It's the same. So, while my head's down building, Natasha can read a comment out and then I can respond to it as I'm building. Um, and then just hopefully we'll just be chilling and having a laugh and see what we can come up with and the tactic is i know dominique's got something planned like <laughs> against the rules right but then i know dominique thinks i've got something planned it isn't against the rules but will give me a bit of an advantage and then i'm trying to figure out what dominique's doing and dominique's going to figure out what i'm doing and it's all about bending and manipulating rules and things. Um, so like, for example, I'll give the game away. Um, I will be using the brushes to paint some of the cockpit. Um, but what I'll probably end up doing is spraying inside the cockpit with the airbrush. Um, we're allowed to use other paints, but it does come with paints. It comes with six paints. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll come up with something. We can use our own paints if we want. But this is what I said. Everything has to be used once. So that black has to be used. Um, the exception being is if there's any parts that are unusable, um, if those paints come out as a solid lump, then obviously we can't use them. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, and it's, yeah, and then may the best man win. Yeah. Um, I was actually, it looks like, I've seen some models that on that little flappy bit there, they, they've got like a British flag. Yeah. And uh, I was going to get an American flag and pop mine on. Um, but I haven't been able to get any. So we'll see what it's like. Um, I can't remember if it comes with stand. Right. Should um, find out on the night. Yeah. Sorry, it wasn't going to do the American flag. I was going to do the British flag. It does come with a stand. I'm assuming it comes with a stand. Yeah. If you look at the picture there. So, um, but yeah, it's it's all going to be about um, time management. So if you want to paint one bit and then while you're waiting for that paint to dry to do a second coat, you want to be working on something else, which is where I think is my weakness. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, at the very, very least, we're going to have a bit of fun. If we end up not raising any money, we'll just have a good time building. It'll be fun. Yeah, totally so, agree. You don't like kisses, do you? Uh, right, MP says good night, Dominique. Um, Teresa says night, Dominique. MP, good night, little cats, good dreams. Uh, good stream night, all see you in the streams. And MP says, very good night, Penny. See, no, very good night, Penny and Natasha. See you next stream. And I think that is the cat chat caught. Oh, 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 hang on. What? So I've lent my model box on the keyboard. Oh, sorry, mister. Um, I've lent the, the box for the models. It lent on the keyboard. Yeah. And it's just it's just scrolled all the chat up. So oh, I'm, God, now, I I'm now looking at the chat from half past nine. <laughs> and then I moved the keyboard, and then the box of models just come tumbling down on um, on shadow. So he's a little bit miffed at the moment. Um, right, guys, I think that's it then. Um. When's my, the next desk, my room and my desk is funny progress because one day I'll make massive progress and then the next day I'll just hardly do anything. Um, and I'm really, really tired lately. Um, 
Did you be low on iron? I don't know if it's from work. Um, I'm a lot more chilled out now. Um, I had the problems in the hotel, and I'm I'm glad to say I won't be going back to that hotel. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to going back to Barking. I do in and nothing wrong with Bow Garage, really. I just didn't enjoy it there, and it just ground me down. Um, yeah, I totally I did, understand oh, that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I got they fulfilled my their contractual agreement. They gave me five shifts a week minimum. 10 hours a day i got paid for exactly what i did um and i got shifts every day yeah um they supplied me with a hotel uh the hotel gave me the breakfast in the morning which is part of the agreement uh, i got my meal allowance you know and everything and and really i've got nothing to complain about but no. it just there's one particular road in london yeah it just ground me down and i'm going up and down this road four or five times a day yeah and it just yeah and i just i ended up saying to the boss i said look i'm really really sorry i said i can't do this anymore i said you know you offered me the chance to get out about four months earlier yeah. and I said, no i put my adult hat on and, and i'll get on with the work i said but i've now reached the point where if I was working for you permanently rather than online, I would actually now be handing my notice in. And he says, fair enough. He says, what about the shifts we've already given you? I said, look, I'll be fair. You've given me the shifts. I'll work those shifts. Um, so I did another three weeks there. And now I've got a three-week break. And next time I go back, I'm going back to a different depot and yeah, yeah. i got back to kilmarnock i was really happy to get back um because the stresses i had in the hotel um because of those stresses i've ended up contacting our booking agent they've got me a different hotel so i was really i mean i'm always happy to come back anyway um every element of my work has good and bad um when i'm in london i'm earning really good money and i can buy nice things and i can I can buy nice things for the cats. Uh, the cat do cats don't have the cheapest kit cat litter. Their food isn't the cheapest, but it's all very good stuff, and I can afford it because of my job in London. But I don't get to see them when I'm in London. No. Um, when I come, when I'm on holiday, I get to see them all day long. Yeah. But I'm only home for a week. And when sure. I'm in Kilmarnock, I get to see them for three weeks but i don't get to see them all day because i'm at work so there's there's good and bad with everything yeah um, it always is yeah so you've got to sort of play the good and the bad and uh, i got back and i i actually come back early i can't got back saturday morning um now they always give me the first monday off at kilmarnock to give me a chance to sort my clothes out and stuff but given me the Tuesday as well. So I actually had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday off. So four days off work. Yeah. Went into work on the Wednesday. And now I wasn't able to get any work for Boxing Day. Normally I'll work Boxing Day because it's double bubble. Um, yeah. But I, I was too slow. Well, I said I was too slow. He put the list up asking the volunteers while I was in London. And then he said to me, he goes, what I'm going to do, you got three days holiday. You're going to get Christmas Day and Boxing Day off. I'm going to chuck the three days holiday in, give you the whole week off. 20, 22 years I've been a bus driver. I've yeah. never had Christmas week off. And now yeah. I first time. So roll on the next 22 years and I'll have another week. I mean, not I don't know how many bus drivers you get the whole Christmas week off. Mm. Um, it just doesn't happen. It's like getting two weekends off on the trot it yeah. just never happens no um so i've gone in i've done five days work now i'm on holiday for a week next week i've got new year's day off now i normally do a four day week on the last week because my fifth day is the train journey back one yeah. of those four days is is new year's day so in fact actually well i remember guys because it's friday now isn't it yes so they should have posted next week's duties 
I'm expecting three days week, three days work next week. Yeah. So, um, but he would have. You'd see, young. That's one of the drawbacks here. Is um, they don't post next week's duties until Friday afternoon. Mm. So it's a pain in the bum. Yeah. Right, current week duties, first of January. Let's see if I got the result I wanted. Six oh five. Oh my god, it gets even better. Oh my word. That can't be right. Well, so I'm me. expecting three days work. Yeah. Because one of those four days is who's New Year is New Year's Day. Yeah. So right. So this is my work week next week. Oh, I've lost me now. New Year's Day holiday. Mm-hmm. 2nd of January holiday. Yeah. Wednesday got a duty. Yeah. Thursday got a duty. Friday rest day. Saturday rest day. Sunday travel to London. I've only got two days work next week. Wow. Oh, have I just hit the jackpot? That yeah. means I'll have done seven days work in three weeks <laughs> well at least it gives you a bit of a break <laughs> bit of a break Enjoy. bit of a break when yeah. i go back to kill manic in seven weeks i'll just be like i'm sorry i haven't done any work in 14 weeks i got no idea what i'm doing can <laughs> i be retrained please oh <laughs> Lovely. Do you know what? It's ever funny. I with the guy who does the rotors, I don't have a problem with him. A lot of people seem to hate him. And, and it is a strong dislike. And I've even said to other managers, I mean, I, I spoke to the operations manager the other day, and I said, I said, I'm all right with, with this guy. I said, in all fairness, I said, I've never had any reason to be upset with him. And his his response, and I think he was genuine, was, "Yeah, but you ain't got to work in the next office to him every day." <laughs> now I have heard rumours about him, um, yeah. but you know, bus driver talk is bus driver talk. Definitely um, agree. Yeah. It's it's, you know, if Disney wants to come up with a new, well, not Disney, but um, if some. Come, uh, Stanley Kubrick wants to come up with an idea for a film, he needs to spend a week in a driver's canteen and then you'll come up with new stories because um, that's how most of it can just be taken with a pinch of salt um, sure. anyone who drives buses will understand that uh, you'll, you'll get these guys in the canteen and you'll, you'll walk in on your lunch break and you'll, you'll overhear someone go and, and then I got out of my cab and I grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and I threw him and his feet didn't touch the ground and you just like, no, you didn't. You were more scared than a child. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's that's how it is. I mean, you probably get that with a lot of things. But, um, but yeah, I never had a problem with this guy. Um, obviously, I don't get a choice in what duties I do. I get given duties. Whatever I get given is what I do. And I've often said to, to, to this guy, I said, look, if I could pick my own duties... I would go for something that's different every day. Yeah. So I'm not doing the same route every day. Um, I appreciate that um, on the last week of Kilmarnock, they tend to give me 10-hour shifts um, because they have to give me 38 hours a week. Yeah. Now, they give me nine hours when I'm on the train to London, but what they end up doing is they give me my 38 hours over four days. Yeah. So when I'm doing a five-day week, they might give me eight, nine hours a day, maybe the odd 10-hour shift, but they tend to give me four 10-hour shifts on me last week. Now, uh, I don't have a major problem with that because it's only one week in 10. Um, but I like variety. 
Yeah, it makes it better for you, yeah. doesn't it, really? And he does give me variety. Um, last week I did the 11s, the 6s, and the 7s, uh, and the 4s. Didn't give me any 3s, and he didn't give me any 9s, but he gave me four different routes to do in five days. That kept me going. And you look like you're about to fall asleep because your meds kicking in as well. Yep. <laughs> yep. I feel high as a kite. Do you? Um, right. Yeah, that's what it did to me. I, I'll just sit there, look like I want to go to sleep, but my eyes squint eventually, uh, right. like I'm tired, but I'm um, not. I'm. Um, I think it's time to finish the stream anyway, because I'm going to go. I'm going to be up quite early in the morning. Because yeah, I've got a piece. I've got a shop delivery. I have got Christmas dinner shopping to do because V did yep. Christmas Day was the 25th. He thought it was the 30th. So we are doing Christmas dinner tomorrow. And Why not? I don't know what I'm most excited about. Cooking, having a good meal, or cooking for someone. I mean, it's really, it's an, it's an ordinary dinner, really, isn't it? Christmas well, Day. Yeah. But... He's never done Christmas dinner. Now, to me, Christmas dinner is about having a proper cooked meal, being surrounded by loved ones, and just gorging yourself until yeah. you feel you're about to pop. I'm going to yep. this dinner. I'm going to put, instead of doing, normally I'll do a meat, a potato, and maybe two veg for gravy, and maybe a Yorkshire pudding. I think I'm going to do about four or five different veggies, two meats, Yorkshire pudding, we're going to have roast potatoes. We're going to have mashed potatoes, possibly boiled potatoes. Um, and then, actually, no, I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat. Instead of having roast potatoes, I think we're going to. No, I'm going to do proper roast potatoes. You got this. And then we're going to pile the plate up high, and I'm going to be really upset if V leaves any, which I know he <laughs> will. No, he have to change his meal around though. Well. We're having at eight o'clock because he's now got to work tomorrow. So mm. I said, right, dinner's at eight o'clock. So tomorrow night we're having a very nice meal. Yeah. And I can't wait. At least so, at least it's a bit it might be a bit late, but at least you're doing it. Yeah. And I think I have perfected my end of stream saying. It's a little, right. well, it, it's one of these in a world when you can be anything, but I think I found a perfect saying. So right. if you don't object, I'm going to close the show tonight, but I will let you say your goodbyes. <laughs> um, thank you, Penny, for the invite and helping me build this model in a different way. Model in a different um, way. I'm going to say good night to you all. Be safe. Take care. Not a problem. Um, so, yeah, you've surprised us all, Natasha. You've done really well today. Um, so thank you, everyone, for watching the show. I still can't believe there's eight people watching this late. Um, but thank you very much. Thank you to Natasha, who's made you always. You can take the most boring stream and you can make it really good fun. Just thank your you. mere presence. Um, but that is all I've got time for tonight. So here comes my wonderful new saying. I've been thinking about this for ages. So, guys, in a world where you can be anything, just be a little bit nicer than you were yesterday. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.